Good afternoon. I see we have a quorum, so I will call this meeting to order. This is a special session of the Bloomington Common Council on August 4th, 2021. Will the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Rallo? Here. Volan? Here. Rosenbarger? Here. Scambalori? Here. Sims? Here. Flaherty? Here. Piedmont Smith? Here. Smith? Here. And Sandberg? Here. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, and everyone um, is present for this evening. Mr. F Council Member Flaherty. Yes, Mr. President, uh, due to concerns for public health and safety, I move we recess and reconvene at 4 o'clock p.m. today, August 4th, in virtual form only, continuing to use the Zoom meeting information available in this special session's agenda and packet. Second. Ooh. Thank you. Properly moved and second. Uh, do we have any debate or comment from Council Member? Council Member Flaherty. Uh, yes, so this motion is debatable and amendable and requires a majority to pass. Um, I've prepared a, a few sentences just by way of explanation. Um, I think a lot of folks know uh, in Monroe County we have COVID-19 vaccination rates of just above 40, I'm sorry, 50 percent. Uh, both cases of COVID-19 and hospitalizations from COVID-19 have been steadily on the rise over the last month. Additionally, the Delta variant of the novel coronavirus is highly contagious and is now responsible for the strong majority of cases in Indiana. And for all these reasons, my view is that hosting a potentially large in-person gathering at City Hall, even with safety protocols in place, is not in the best interests of public health and the safety of our community at this time. That said, I feel very badly and apologize for the inconvenience uh, to folks who plan to comment in person today. Unfortunately, due to the uncertainty of whether Governor Holcomb would extend the declared state of emergency, and due to the long lead time and relatively significant expense of noticing this public hearing on proposed annexation, as well as how it was originally noticed uh, for a hybrid meeting, it was not a viable option to reschedule the meeting to be virtual prior to this motion today. Uh, these factors, along with the trajectory of COVID-19 cases in Monroe County, were largely outside the control of this council and I apologize that it took a, a couple days of discussion to, to reach this um, approach. If this motion passes, everyone will still have the time and opportunity to share their comments in a virtual meeting. And this format, in my view, does not at all diminish the critical importance of this meeting and the input we will receive from the public. We also continue to welcome comments via email or via mail to the council office. Thank you. Do we have any further comments from any further council members? Mr. Lucas, do we have anybody online? I can't see. Council member Rallo. Oh, I'm sorry. There was an echo. Do you? Yeah. Council member Rallo. I, are, are you hearing an echo? No. Okay, good. Uh, well, I agree w with my colleague, um, parliamentarian Flaherty. Um, I think with regard to the motion, the, the landscape for this pandemic has changed considerably over the last week, two weeks or so. Um, of course, the, he referred to the new variant, which is now about 80, over 80% 80 of the new cases in, in the country. Uh, I would just add that the, the variant seems to be able to propagate in people, even if they've been vaccinated. That's not to say that the vaccination isn't effective. It's, it's effective at reducing serious illnesses. Um, but we need to be cognizant of the transmission of the virus. And uh, we need to prevent uh, large gatherings like this one um, from, uh, from being responsible for further transmission. So I'll be supporting the, the motion. Um, and that is to say that um, in the future, I wouldn't mind discussing further meetings if we need to have them to uh, extend debate on this topic, to allow people to meet in person if conditions allow it. Um, but today that just seems to be imprudent. So um, I'll be supporting the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Rollo. Council Member Piedmont Smith. Um, yes, I, I wanted to uh, address the situation in which uh, individuals I am speaking. 
Sorry. <laughs> um, I wanted to address the situation uh, in which somebody may not have the technology at home to join or ask questions or give their public comment via Zoom. And I believe the Monroe County Public Library is open until 9 o'clock tonight and does have public computer terminals uh, available. And so I would encourage anybody who is unable to um, participate from home due to technology issues to take advantage of the public resource of our, our public library. Um, that said, I, I think we're in a, a very regrettable situation here because I know um, there's no real substitute for for one-on-one -on -one interaction. Um, it's not as powerful to to make your comments over Zoom. Um, then again, uh, it's we have gotten into the habit of um, doing public comment over Zoom, and in in some senses, we have um, been. All right. Well. I'll, I'll just cut to the chase that I think it's, it's regrettable, but given the public health situation, I do support this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Piedmont Smith. Councilmember Volan. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, in the motion where we talked about how uh, this meeting would be structured, I moved for a uh, half hour recess which seems to be no longer necessary um, if we're going to be meeting online after four, starting from four until I assume 9 p.m. Um, is it appropriate for me to move, uh, that we remove the recess or how, what, I'm looking for advice from the chair. Well, I'll um, let our parliamentary address it, but what I do think is that that would be proper if in fact the motion passes and then we do reconvene at four and once we reconvene, um, then your motion w is better to be entertained then, if I'm correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any more or other council comments? Council member Sandberg. Thank you. Um, given the lateness of this announcement and this possible action, I know we have reserved tomorrow night, Thursday, August the 5th, as a possible overflow night. Um, and I know this can be discussed too once this motion is dispatched. Um, but I think under the circumstances and with all due respect to the public, I would hope that uh, that, that meeting be also dealt with tonight in terms of announcing it and making sure more of the public knows that this will be continued into another day. I think that is only fair, given what is possible to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Sandberg. Do you have any further comments from Council Members? Okay. President Sims, yes, may I? Yes, Council may I Member Rallo. May I ask that uh, if anyone in the audience there has written comments that they'd like to submit to, uh, to give them to our Council Attorney Stephen Lucas, so that he can uh, give them, give copies of those to us. Okay, thank you. And I believe I was referred to in a notice that we're giving to folks here present. Um, but thank you for that sure. reminder. No, thank you very, very thank much. You. Okay, seeing no further comments. Um, what I'd like to say is um, in deference to one of my council colleagues, yes, there has been multiple contingency dates discussed um, should this conversation from the public be needed to continue. Um, we don't have a crystal ball, so I don't know if it'll be done in today or if it'll need to be extended to other dates. We do have contingency dates. I do think it's improper, um, if not unwise, to announce those dates until we get to the end of today's deliber deliberations to see if we, in fact, will need to schedule those dates. Um, I was asked earlier by someone out in, in the lobby um, about their right to speak. And that has never, ever been the case. In fact, I do not believe that um, that right has been taken away. In order to schedule 
um, these meetings. We must do these in advance and we must properly publicly notice them. When this meeting was noticed, it was noticed prior to the mayor, I'm sorry, the governor extending his emergency health order until the end of this month. But our meeting was scheduled after July 31st, which, which we anticipated that his health order would be rescinded, but it got extended. So um, it, it behooves us in order to, to go through this process, I do believe, um, not only to ensure that the public, as best we can, still have a right to, to comment, and we've given you several options um, to speak with us, contact our office, send emails, um, that sort of thing. And I would ask that you please take advantage of that. I would also say that with the extension of the governor's order, with some of the facts that my colleagues has announced with the vaccination rate, um, the uh, however slight surge of infection rates, and the fact that this variant is more contagious, it is more unpredictable than the initial COVID as, as my understanding. So um, I as president of this council, and it is if it's the will of my colleagues, then this motion will pass. If not, then it will fail. But my main concern is that we are considerate and concerned as much as possible for the health and safety of this public. I, as president, am not sure that a public gathering is the best way to go about it. Um, one last thing. I was also asked, why not tell the public earlier? Um, and I hope that is not an insinuation that this was something we knew a week ago and just sprung it on people today. This has been an ongoing conversation with our, our council staff, with some of our colleagues on some of these concerns. Um, there are legal considerations with regard to noticing and how we conduct business. So all of those things have to be taken into account. This possible action brought on by this motion, I feel, is the most middle road approach between taking care of council business, receiving public comment, and being as uh, pragmatic as possible about this community's health and safety with regard to uh, gathering uh, in a public meeting. So thank you very much. Mr. President. Yes, Council Member Volan. I'd like to ask a brief question. Uh, I see uh, 20 people in attendance in the room. Can I ask how many people are attending at the moment online? besides the uh, members who are obligated to be here? There are 138 participants on Zoom. That includes uh, council members, city staff. Um, that's everyone, uh, 139. So. Okay, so including everybody, there's more than 100 people attending via Zoom. Okay, thank you, that answers my question. Thank you very much. Um, Good question, and I will say that those folks that are on Zoom, of course, if this motion passes, we will reconvene um, at the time that's announced, I believe it's 4 p.m. And um, we're also, people that are present have been asked to sign in on the, uh, the sheet that we have out front, and they will be in the queue um, to speak in the order in which they sign that, um, should this motion pass to reconvene. So again, it's unfortunate, it's not ideal, but to the best of our ability, we think this is the best middle road approach um, to again, take care of business. So seeing no further council comments, will the clerk please call the roll on the motion on the floor? Rallo? Yes. Volan? Yes. Rosenbarger? Yes. Scambalori? Yes. Sims? Yes. Flaherty? Yes. Piedmont Smith? Yes. Smith? Yes. And Sandberg? Yes. Thank you. That motion passes 9-0. We will re recess and we will reconvene at 4 p.m. on the Zoom link that is, um, has been 
illustrate it, for lack of a better term. And at that point, we will continue with the agenda of the today's special session. Thank you very much. See you in about 43 minutes or so. Good afternoon again, everyone. I do see that we have a quorum um, and we will reconvene this special session of August the 4th, 2021. Will the clerk please call the roll? Yes, um, let's see here. Councilmember Rallo? Here. Volan? Not yet. Councilmember Rosenbarger? Here. Scambalori? Here. Sims? Here. Flaherty? Here. Piedmont Smith? Here. Smith? Here. And Sandberg? Here. Thank you. Okay, thank you very, very much. We will continue with the agenda summation for today. Today's agenda includes legislation for second readings and resolutions where the council will conduct public hearings on eight ordinances proposing the annexation of certain territory into the city of Bloomington. Copies of today's agenda are available um, where well, we're available out by the clerk's office, but they are available um, online. Is that right, Mr. Lucas? Okay. That, that's correct. Okay, thank you very much um, for those attending uh, this meeting. Okay, I'm sorry. The agenda is also available electronically on the council's website, bloomington.in.gov backslash council. From that main homepage, click on the meetings and documents button and scroll down to today's date to find the agenda and meeting packet. Each ordinance on today's agenda applies to one of the eight territories proposed for annexation. Each item is titled an ordinance of the city of Bloomington, Monroe County, Indiana, annexate, annexing territory to the city of Bloomington, placing the same within the corporate boundaries thereof and making the same a part of the city of Bloomington. These ordinances are as follows. Ordinance 17-09 proposes the annexation of Area 1A, Southwest A Bloomington annexation. Ordinance 1710 proposes the annexation of Area 1B, Southwest B Bloomington annexation. Ordinance 17-11 proposes the annexation of Area 1C, Southwest C Bloomington annexation. Ordinance 1712 proposes the annexation of Area 2, Southeast Bloomington Annexation. Ordinance 17-13 proposes the annexation of Area 3, North Island Bloomington Annexation. Ordinance 17-14 proposes the annexation of Area 4, Central Island Bloomington Annexation. Ordinance 17-15 proposes the annexation of Area 5, South Island, Bloomington Annexation. And Ordinance 17-17 proposes the annexation of Area 7, uh, North Bloomington Annexation. Copies of these ordinances along with the annexation area maps are also available again on the website or the council's website that I mentioned earlier. Um, just a reminder, the council previously scheduled a break during today's meeting from 5.45 to 6.15 p.m. and set an end time for 9 p.m. These, these times can be changed by further motion of the council. Before moving to the next agenda item, I'd like to give a brief explanation of how today's meeting will function and a bit of background. This meeting continues annexation proceedings that the city of Bloomington began in 2017. The city's annexation process was put on hold in 2017 as a result of changes in state law and subsequent litigation. The city is now able to resume the annexation process and the council is now at the public hearing stage of that process. The public hearing is a required part of the annexation process where all interested parties must have the opportunity to testify as to the proposed annexations. 
not sooner than 30 days and not longer than 60 days following the completion of this public hearing, the council may vote to approve or deny the annexation ordinances. The council will not vote on any of the ordinances at today's meeting. Again, this special session is being held to hear comments from the public on the annexation proposals. The council will not deliberate on the items or be able to vote on them this evening. There will not be an opportunity for a back and forth dialogue between members of the public and the council. Rather, today is an opportunity for the public to comment on the proposed annexations. Beyond speaking at this meeting today, members of the public are welcome to submit written comments to the council by emailing council at bloomington.in.gov. That's council at bloomington.in.gov or by mailing comments to the Office of the Common Council at 401 North Morton Street, Suite 110, Bloomington, Indiana, 47404. If you have any prepared handouts, um, should we, if we were to meet in person, you can give them to the clerk. Any submitted written comments won't be read out loud at this meeting, but will be provided and circulated to all council members and city staff. I also anticipate that the council will consider a motion to structure deliberations in order to provide time limits on public comment and to allow a speaker to comment on as many of the ordinances as they wish during their opportunity to comment. So instead of asking folks to wait until a particular ordinance comes up, individuals that would like to speak will be able, will be able to comment on as many of the ordinances as they wish during that one comment period. I would also like to make a request of the public because, I'm sorry, hang on just for a second, please. Okay, uh, thank you. Because we have a large number of people who would like to speak to these items and we like to get to as many as possible today, please keep your comments as concise and as to the point as possible. If there's a time limit, you will of course be welcome to speak for that entire amount of time but you are not certainly required to. We will have a speaker timer displayed so that each speaker can see the time remaining. The timer will change from green to orange to red, then to alert you when your time is almost up. So the timer will change from green to orange and then to red to alert you when your time is almost up. The color will change to orange and a tone will sound at 30 seconds left and the color will change to red and another tone will sound when time is up. Here's a quick de demo so you can hear what to expect. Uh, will you do that demo, uh, Mr. Lucas? There you go. Thank you very much. Regardless of whether you're attending in person or via Zoom, um, in this case in Zoom, you will have the same opportunity to speak. Comments will be heard on a first come first serve basis and will continue until all interested individuals have been given an opportunity to speak. Um, I think at this point, um, I'd also like to add that those that were at uh, the council chambers and at city hall um, prior to our recess, um, were asked to sign in so that we have their names um, and or to make sure that our clerk has their names um, because it is our intent to start them in the queue um, as they are scheduled on the list that they signed up. So therefore, there will be more at the beginning um, of the meeting as they would have been had we uh, not recessed. For those attending this meeting, um, obviously via Zoom, please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to speak. You can find the raise hand button in your meeting control bar. Depending on the, the device you're on, you may need to click the participants button from the menu bar and then click raise hand. Some mobile devices might require you to click the more button and then click raise hand. Finally, if you called into the meeting via telephone, you can raise your hand by dialing star nine. Once your hand is raised, please leave it raised. 
as lowering, lowering it will move you to the end of the list. We will also read out five nine names at a time for those commenting on Zoom before asking you to unmute one at a time. Individuals will have audio enabled, but not video. And we will follow these comments um, in groups of five. Um, and when we read out the names of the speakers coming up next, uh, please be prepared to unmute yourself when asked by the meeting hosts. In the event that members of the public have indicated their intent to speak at the public hearing and have not had the opportunity to do so by 9 p.m., the council may either consider a motion to extend tonight's meeting or may consider a motion to recess and reconvene the meeting at a later date and time, which will be announced at tonight's meeting. Um, so the main point of that is that uh, if we end the meeting tonight, we still intend to make those notes and should we schedule a future meeting date, we will continue um, so as to try and hear from everyone who wishes to speak. We now move on to legislation for second readings and resolutions. Um, is there a motion? Council Member Flaherty. Uh, yes, I'd like to make a motion um, with regard to how we are structuring uh, the meeting. Um, one moment. I move to conduct today's meeting in the following manner. The council will hold a public hearing concerning the annexations proposed by ordinance 17-09 through ordinance 17-15 and ordinance 17-17. Interested parties shall have an opportunity to testify to the, as to the proposed annexations. Speakers will have one opportunity to speak for up to three minutes, during which time the speaker may comment on as many of the eight ordinances, proposed annexation ordinances as they wish. Thank you. Second. Thank you. It's been properly moved and second um, on a motion to structure debate. Will the clerk please call the roll? Sorry about that. Councilmember Rosenberger. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. I don't know if you heard. Yes. Thank you. Scambalori? Yes. Sims? Yes. Flaherty? Yes. Piedmont Smith? Yes. Smith? Yes. Sandberg? Yes. And Rallo? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That um, motion carries nine. Eight zero. Sorry, um, Council Member Flaherty. Uh, yes, I'd also like to move that in light of the virtual format of the meeting, we dispense of the previously scheduled recess from five forty-five to six fifteen p.m. Instead, conducting this meeting without recess until the previously previously established end time of nine p.m. Second. Thank you. It's been properly moved and second. Um, with regard to removal of the previously scheduled break and as well as the previously scheduled end time. Okay, will the clerk please call the roll? Um, yes, Council Member Scambalori? Yes. Sims? Yes. Clarity? Yes. Piedmont Smith? Yes. Smith? Yes. Sandberg? Yes. Rallo? Yes. And Rosenberger? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, and that motion um, carries. Um, we will now move to the hearing portion of our meeting, um, or which is the, the main purpose of our meeting, that is to go to the public for comment. Um, Mr. Lucas, who do we have in the queue? <clears throat> yes, and just a, another reminder on how folks can raise their hand, which they should do now if, if they uh, would like to comment. You can find the raise hand button in your control bar at the bottom of your Zoom screen. 
you may need to click on the participants button uh, and then there should be a sidebar that, that pops up and uh, I believe there's a raise hand option there. On some mobile devices, I believe you have to click the more button and there's a raise hand function uh, that, that should come up. And if you are calling in uh, via telephone, I believe you can dial star nine to uh, raise your hand. If all of that fails and you are on uh, uh, Zoom, not on telephone and can send a chat in to the meeting host, um, we won't be reading comments out loud, but you can indicate that you'd like to speak and we'll ask you to unmute. So um, with that, um, I do have the list of folks who signed in in person. And uh, the first five names uh, on that list are Bart Farrell, Nikki Williamson, Dan Williamson, Joseph Grott, and Jim Burton. I don't see Bart Farrell in the meeting, but I do see Nikki Williamson. And uh, Ms. Williamson should be able to unmute now. Hello. Can you Hello, hear me? Ms. Williams. Yes, we hear you fine. You have three minutes, ma'am. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Nikki Williamson, and I'm the president of Edgewood Hills Homeowners Association. Edgewood Hills is located in Area 2. We are situated off of Highway 46, east of the city of Bloomington. We have a forthcoming amendment respectfully asking that we be removed from the plan. We in Edgewood Hills believe that annexation is an appropriate course of action as metropolitan areas grow and change and major city amenities are expanded into neighborhoods that meet the criteria for urbanization. However, we also believe that certain neighborhoods are not appropriate for that action when those services cannot and will not be provided. Edgewood Hills is one such neighborhood. Established in the 1960s, we are a self-contained neighborhood of 58 houses. We are surrounded by two creeks and are heavily forested on all sides, including lands protected by Sycamore Land Trust. As such, there is no room for expansion within our neighborhood or the surrounding areas. Furthermore, because of the topography and density, city department leaders have confirmed that common amenities such as parks, busing, and sewer lines will not be placed in our neighborhood. Finally, the city of Bloomington is functionally inaccessible to our neighborhood. There is only one road in and out of Edgewood Hills, that is Lori Lane. To get to the near nearest city sidewalk, we must walk up Lori Lane, which is very narrow, heavily forested on both sides and non-shouldered. Once we get to the top of Lori Lane, we are met with Highway 46. We then have to walk a half a mile down Highway 46 to reach the nearest city sidewalk. I think it's safe to assume that NDOT has no plans to put sidewalks down Highway 46. One final point of clarification, Edgewood Hills is not connected to any other neighborhood in Monroe County. Our nearest neighbor is Cedar Springs, which sits directly to our west. That is a newer neighborhood, less than 10 years old, and we assume that they may have some of those city amenities in place. However, we share no common characteristics and we have no roads connecting us to them. If the city would want to build a road, it would need to clear forested lands on private property belonging to our homeowners, which is a potential eminent domain case. Our forthcoming amendment outlines these points in more detail, and I'm also available to answer questions of any of you in the coming days. I wanna close by saying that we appreciate the time and careful consideration you are putting into this project. From our interactions with many of you in recent weeks, we know that you are very thoughtful in your deliberation, and we really appreciate you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Williamson. <laughs> Thank you. Who's next, Mr. Lucas? Next up is Bart Farrell, and I believe Mr. Farrell should be able to unmute. Are you with us, Hello. Mr. Farrell? Can, can you hear Hello, me? Howard. Yeah, we hear you fine. Go ahead. You have three minutes. Uh, my name is Bart Farrell, and I live on East Heritage Woods Road, which is included in Area 2. My neighbors and I oppose the inclusion of our roads and homes in this process. 
Last month, we submitted a detailed document addressing our legal and statistical justification for being exempt. A few of them are, we're not contiguous to the city. We don't meet the definition of urban. In fact, we're rural. Our population density is 1.56 persons, short of the required three people per acre. We do not provide any available land for growth or development. I'd like to address our road and the services the city may provide. We are a privately owned and maintained road, though paved, not up to county or city standards. As a result, the city stated they would not take over ownership or maintenance of our road. It was deemed cost prohibitive. The city informed us that it is extremely unlikely they would provide us services such as trash pickup. As a private road not up to code, the city would be liable for any damage to our road caused by their trucks. Again, cost prohibitive. We do not want on city trash pickup or snow removal. To limit potential damage to our road, we've made arrangements with private companies that offer smaller lighter trucks for trash removal and recycling services. And for snow removal, we have arrangements with a private company that provides us snow, plow, snow removal as often as we need it. All homes here are on septic. Estimated cost each homeowner to convert to city sewer is approximately $20,000 per home. We receive police service from the county sheriff's office and have absolutely no issues. Even if annexed, our fire protection would remain with the county. Financially, we would all see significant increases in our property taxes. We enjoy what Bloomington has to offer. Paying property taxes is not the only way to show support for a city. We dine at the local restaurants, shop in town, visit the farmer's market, attend shows at the BCT, use the parking garage, feed the meters, and go to all the downtown events, such as the 4th Street Fair, Lotus Festival, and Canopy of Lights. Many of us work in downtown Bloomington. The mayor reportedly stated that people who live in the city's fringes benefit from the city's success by having access to better retail, restaurants, and entertainment. Perhaps you should consider that part of the success these venues have achieved is because they are frequented by those of us residing in the city's fringe. Increase our taxes and our disposable income quickly dries up. That same support and association associated tax revenue also goes away. Our road is less than a mile long, a dead end street, all residential, only 35 homes, no commercial properties. Where would we fall on the city's list of priorities? Decades ago, we created the nonprofit Heritage Woods Road Association so we could be self-sufficient. City services are not required. Nothing the mayor is offering to any annexed area is guaranteed. You can simply be annexed, fall under tighty city, tighter city rules and regulations, and not get anything in return. We could end up paying taxes for up to four years before we were allowed to vote. City Council I'm members, sorry, thank sorry. you for your time and for allowing East Heritage Wood Road residents to be heard. Thank you for your comments. Who do we have next, Ms. Orgis? Next up is Dan Williamson. Uh, yeah, I'm here. How are you, sir? Uh, we hear you fine. You have three minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon, Council members. My name is Dan Williamson. Uh, I'm a homeowner in the Edgewood Hills neighborhood of Area 2. Uh, I serve as the treasurer for our homeowners association. I also own an insurance agency in the city of Bloomington on the west side. Uh, being in the insurance industry, <clears throat> I've paid attention to growth in the city. And it seems to me that largest, the largest potential for growth is happening on the west side. If the city is annexing property as a strategy for future growth, I would think the best opportunity for that lies uh, west of town. I also want to thank the council members uh, for their thoughtful examination of the current maps and for their willingness to meet with us and hear our concerns regarding this process. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you for your comments. So what do we have next, Mr. Lucas? Next up is Joseph Grot, although I'm not sure. I see him in the meeting. Uh, Jim Burton, I believe, is next up. And give me just a moment. Should be ready to comment. Jim Burton. Can you hear me? Yes, we do, Mr. Burton. Thank you. Okay. You, have three, you have three minutes. My name is Jim Burton. I'm here on behalf of the residents of Area 7. 93% of our eligible property owners adamantly oppose annexation 
and have signed preliminary petitions. You're receiving print copies of those this evening. I urge you to consider our comments and ask you to withdraw Area 7 from consideration. We are part of the greater community. We care about and contribute to the quality of life in Monroe County, as well as Bloomington. However, Area 7's 115 county residents are scattered over 896 acres, and the rural nature of our properties and lifestyle cannot be considered urban. In Area 7, there are farms. We own barns, sheds, and outbuildings. We manage livestock, acres of fields and woodlands, and contend with severe topography, karst, and 281 acres of FEMA floodplain and wetlands. There's no question that this is a rural area. It is not urban or urbanizing. Since the 2017 hearings on Area 7, nothing has changed. The territory doesn't meet Indiana annexation criteria, not for population density, not for subdivision, not for commercial business or industrial zoning, nor to our knowledge has the city made a financial commitment to support an imminent planned economic development project or indicated plans for developments in the near future. To date, the city has installed only 3.2 miles of sewer in Area 7. Only five properties have sewer waivers, four of which originated in 89, 91, and 92, well over 15 years ago. Criteria for annexation states that the city bears the burden of proving to a court that an annexation is of the best interest of the landowners in the territory to be annexed. Our increased property taxes will provide no benefits we desire or don't already have. We're happy with the services available to us and the freedom to change at our discretion. Sewer and bus services will not be feasible or a priority for Area 7 in this six year timeline. If we became city residents, we will be subject to additional taxes to primarily support the urban needs of the city and urban land restrictions will be imposed on our rural properties. The city shares the county's vision for Area 7 corridors into Bloomington. It stands to reason that both governmental entities have an obligation to their residents and constituents to work together on this issue. Opposition is strong enough to stop annexation without a court hearing. We are committed to a remonstrance if necessary. We respect, respectfully ask you to withdraw Area 7 from the annexation plan now. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. What do we have next, Mr. Lucas? Next up, uh, I still do not see Joseph Grott in the meeting. Uh, the next five speakers will be Jamie Ford, Ken Day, uh, Nelda Susie Rimstead, Bob Rimstead, and uh, Thomas McGee. And I believe Jamie Ford is up next and should now be able to unmute. I think they muted themselves instead of unmuted. Let's try that again. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. You have three minutes. Thank you. I'm Jamie Ford and a resident of proposed annexation area 1B. I am opposed to annexation for the following reasons. First, Mayor Hamilton and the city of Bloomington are violating Indiana Code 36, Article 4, Chapter 3, Section 13, Subsection D, Number 9D, which states that the fiscal plan must include, quote, the most recent assessed value of the parcel, end quote. The city of Bloomington annexation webpage states that the annexation process was resumed with, quote, the distribution of revised and updated fiscal plans for the proposed annexation areas, end quote. It is not updated. My property information in the fiscal plan shows that the financial impact to base, is based on data from 2019, which means this data is two years old. Since 2019, an assessment of my parcel by the Monroe County Assessor has been done not once but twice with the newest assessment effective January 1st, 2021, a full 138 days before the fiscal plan was presented to the City Council in May 2021. This means that the mayor and city have not fully and properly planned this annexation thoroughly or that they both knowingly and willingly 
distributed inaccurate, out-of-date information to both city and county residents, as well as the city council. Either way, the fiscal plan is unreliable and cannot be used for the basis of annexation. Second, this means that the Baker Tilly report for the county must be considered because even with 2020 data it used, it is more accurate. The results are much different. County-funded entities such as safety groups like MFPD, libraries, and the school system, which are vital cornerstones of our society, would see a loss of revenue that would have a negative impact for years to come. City residents will feel this negative impact because they are county residents too. Therefore, annexation is not good for county or city residents. Finally, the city is strategically choosing to delay the annexation effective date until after the next local elections to benefit a money-hungry, power-tripping career politician with job security. This means that I will be taxed without representation, and that goes against the foundational principles that this grand experiment of United States democracy allows. That I, as a U.S. citizen, have the right to participate in government, even local government, by voting for elected officials. That I have the right to my, for my voice to be heard. It is for this reason and the others mentioned that I'm here to say vote no against annexation of Area 1B into the City of Bloomington. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Ford. Who do we have next, Mr. Lucas? Next up is Ken Day, although I don't see a Ken Day in the meeting. Um, so I will call on uh, Susie Rimstead, who should now be able to unmute. Speaking from Stone Lake Park, 1A and uh, my uh, testimony is personal. I want to live life to its fullest as long as I live. I want to be active and a productive person as long as I physically can. I also want to vote in the city that I've lived in for 45 years and one block out of the city for an additional six years. Um, what does that have to do with annexation? Well, many anti-annexationists have said that there isn't a single service that they don't presently have that they need or want. I want to make you aware of accessible transportation provided by the city. And no, I don't work for Bloomington Transit. Uh, one accessibility service that no one to my knowledge has mentioned in the newspaper at least is accessible transportation. City buses are fully accessible but I've had more experience with BT access. Yes, I'm mobile now and I drive now, but I've had temporary acceptance to use BT access at least three times after orthopedic surgeries and heart attacks when I wasn't allowed to drive. Before my husband retired, I was able to continue to work two weeks after these events because BT access would come to my driveway and deliver me to wherever I was to work that particular day. I know of other people right now with disabilities who continue to work, go to the supermarket, medical appointments, and other social activities only because they use BT access. What do they pay for this service? $2 each way. It also runs six days a week, all day into the evening. A majority of those living in our Stone Lake Park development are not disabled but the majority are retired and everyone retired or not are one minute from becoming disabled. Nobody wants to face that possibility. I hope that doesn't become your reality. I ask one individual who is opposed to annexation in our area, what he'd do if he had to use either of the other private companies who do provide accessible vans for those with disabilities in the county as well as the city, since he doesn't qualify for Medicaid. These companies do preponderantly supply Medicaid trips. He currently uses his car for outings eight, eight to 10 times per week. I told him the cost of the two private companies and his answer was, I'd probably stay home most of the time. What kind of life is that? $4 round trip, round trip within the city limits. Um, if you're for BT access or $30 to $40 if you're ambulatory. Sorry, Ms. Remstead, sorry about that, but your time is up. Okay. Thank you so much for your comments. Who do we have next, Mr. Lucas? Uh, next up is Bob Remstead, 
who should now be able to unmute. I think I'm unmuted. Yes, you are. Thank you. We hear you loud and clear. You have three minutes. I live in uh, Stone Lake Park. That's 1A of the annexation, uh, annexation code. Uh, and uh, the, this is uh, in the northwest uh, part of the county. Um, we circulated a position and uh, most uh, people signed it. This is a retirement community. It's not a 55 plus community, but uh, only about uh, a dozen people work full time and everybody else is retired on a fixed income. We have our garbage picked up weekly. Our recyclables are picked up every two weeks. Uh, one person needed uh, a police officer, so she called the sheriff's department and a deputy was here in five minutes. Uh, about the only thing the city could offer us is bus service. The streets are plowed uh, when it snows, sidewalks are clean, driveways are clean, and uh, we like it here. And uh, it's uh, one of the best kept secrets in the county, according to our realtor who sold us our property, because it's hidden uh, back of uh, uh, Super 8 Motel. That's uh, all I have to say. Thank you very much for your comments, Mr. Remstead. Who do we have next, Mr. Lucas? Next up is Tom McGee. Hello, do you hear me? We sure do, Mr. McGee, how are you? I'm doing well. Good, thank you, you have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you for letting me speak. My name is Thomas McGee. I wish to argue against the proposed ordinance affecting my home in zone 1B. While the city of Bloomington is a jewel of South Central Indiana, I ask the council to explore the lands of the county which will be affected by this proposal. We have more grass than buildings, unfenced lots and large sheds. I hear roosters throughout the day. If a neighbor sees a groundhog tearing up his or her vegetable garden, he or she will grab a rifle. If we are very well served by our fine sheriff's department. We have multiple trash and recycling companies which compete for our business. Yet the mayor describes that the city will bring so-called enhanced services to replace these. I do not wish to offend the services within the city, but we are not asking for them and we do not want them. Please listen to the message that is being spoken by numerous voices today. This is an unwanted and hostile annexation proposal. The mayor tells you that outward expansion of the city is necessary. He'd have you think that the city government needs to take over these areas. Our state constitution reads, free governments are and of right ought to be instituted for the people's peace, safety, and well-being. Good governments look out for the well-being of its people and seek to be good neighbors of this community. The city council is entrusted with the reputation of your fine city and the well being of all who would be subject to your ordinances. The mayor describes a mode of growth as though the city is a cancer that must ever grow, consuming the unique and healthy communities surrounding it. I ask will you act as good stewards with the power that you wield over others? and choose to be a good neighbor, please say no to participating in these hostile annexation efforts. Thank you. I yield my time. Thank you, Mr. McGuire, for your comments. Who do we have next, Mr. Lucas? Our next five commenters, uh, assuming they're on the meeting, will be Marsha Johnson, Barbara Leninger, Andrew Briggs, David Garrett, and Jamie McAllister. And first up is, uh, Give me just a moment. Well, I thought I saw Marsha Johnson on the meeting. 
I'm not sure if she hopped off. So we will go to uh, Barbara Leniger, who should now be able to unmute. Yes, hello, council members. Um, hello. hello. You can hear me? Yes, we hear you fine. You have three minutes. All right. Uh, while I don't have a written statement today, um, and I, I'm in the same area as uh, Jamie Ford, I'm in 1B, uh, and I pretty much agree with everything she said. As far as Tom goes, um, I appreciate the fact that he has the opportunity to take a gun out and, and kill the groundhogs. I probably would give them a carrot, but in any case, we have those rights as it stands right now. Um, and, I, and I do want to just note that I was very disappointed that the meeting was closed today. I did call the hospital and ask about um, the health crisis that I was told we were in. And the hospital told me there was no crisis, so I just wanted to put that out there. Um, I feel like it is voter suppression not to be able to attend this in person. Uh, in the area where I live, there's really no available land for growth or development by the city. We uh, already have city water and sewer, which I pay for. And um, right now, there's no need for any trash service. We're happy with what we have, and we ha are happy to make the choices, have those choices. And uh, I would like the council members to please vote against this uh, unlawful annexation and um, allow the people to have their property. I'm a victim of uh, eminent no domain and had a portion of my property taken by the state for uh, the I-69. And uh, I've already lost property, I've lost trees and a lot of my rights. So I do not want this to happen again. And I would ask you to vote no. Thank you so much for your comments. Who do we have next, Mr. Lucas? Oh, I don't see uh, Andrew Briggs or David Garrett on the meeting. Um, so we will go to Jamie McAllister. And just, just briefly, um, if I've called out your name and you are, uh, you've joined the meeting under a different screen name, please, uh, please let me know in chat if you can. Uh, I think that includes Joseph Grott, uh, Ken Day, uh, Marsha Johnson, and now uh, Andrew Briggs and David Garrett. So we'll go to Jamie McAllister next, who should now be able to unmute. Yeah. Go ahead. Hi, my name's Jamie McAllister. I'm a retired hairdresser. I live on a fixed income. I am not gaining anything, nor will my neighbors, if this annexation happens. We already have snow removal. We have, we have a recycle place within a mile of our house. We have sidewalks. I used to live in the city and I enjoyed being able to walk to campus. However, the home I lived in there, the property taxes became so expensive, I could not afford them. And that's when I had to move out in the county I love being out in the county. We can do, uh, have any pets we want. We can, we don't have to, you know, adhere to any strict rules. Um, I live down by the racetrack and that's never bothered me. Um, in turn, if you increase this by annexing me in, I will no longer be able to afford even the county and you've already raised the taxes once this year already. If you live out here, you can compost, you can burn your trash, and you can recycle all you want to. There's a bus stop out here. However, it's a two-mile walk from here, and I don't believe the bus station will come out here. There are also three law officers that live in my neighborhood. So I never have to worry about police activity not, not getting to me in time. So with all this said, I am absolutely and completely against the annexation as well as my neighborhood. They are also in the same boat I'm in and they cannot afford this increase. So where would you like us to go live now? That's it. 
Thank you so much for your comments. Mr. Lucas, who do we have next, please? Next up is Andrew Briggs. I need to unmute you. And they should now be able to unmute. Uh, hello, my name is Andrew Briggs. I live in section 1A of the proposed annexation. That's the in the Fieldstone neighborhood, to be exact. And I'd like to thank you all for hearing our comments today. I'd like to begin with a couple uh, statements. Some of it might be debatable, and you might not agree with me, but I believe that bigger government usually translates to more waste, higher taxes, mediocre services, less freedom for people to choose. And I'm making an assumption here that we are still a democratic republic and that your job is to, to serve the will of the people. I'm not being a Bloomington resident. I did not vote for any of you. Uh, maybe I'll have that opportunity, unfortunately, in the future, but I don't want that opportunity. Uh, I think you ought to make a referendum on next year's midterm election. I appreciate the, the, uh, the concern of the woman who'd like to get public transportation to her neighborhood. That's, that's a viable thing. But to force this thing down people's throat, a resistant taxpayer's throat, is really, it's, it's not a thing of integrity, and I think it probably isn't legal because it's not, uh, it's not represent positive representation of the people. And you're making a choice for us that we aren't asking for. I'm um, very uh, thankful for the city I live in. I have city water. Uh, I have city sewer, which I pay a lot more for than I do for the water. Um, but we pay for those services. We need those services. We want those services. But why not just give us the choice rather than steamroll this thing down on top of us? Because that's not going to have any kind of uh, good uh, goodwill of the public behind your uh, decision. That's all I have to say. Thank you for hearing my comment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Lucas. Yes, uh, the next five folks, uh, and again, we're almost through the list of folks who uh, signed up in person, and then we'll move to the folks who have their hand raised uh, currently in Zoom, uh, if we've not already called on you. Uh, the next five folks will be uh, Jocelyn Bowie, uh, Stephen Lehman, Jim Shroom, Penny Githens, and James McKinney. And first up, I believe, is Joc uh, Jocelyn Bowie, who should be able to unmute now. Hi, can you hear me? You sure can, Ms. Bowie. Thank you. You have three minutes. Hi, my name is Jocelyn Bowie. I live in Gramercy Park. I own property at the corner of Smith Road and Rogers Road, one acre of which is included in area two for annexation. My parcel and four other parcels belonging to two neighbors have been inappropriately marked for annexation. Together, we would like to bring some inconsistencies to your attention. Two of the parcels in question are permanently protected by conservation easement with Sycamore Land Trust, my acre and a nearly 13 acre tract owned by the Fries. These two parcels are vacant and never will be developable. Valued at $100 and $200 respectively, they will never yield any tax benefit to the city. The city sewer system does not come close enough to our, th our properties to, for us to hook into the system. I asked the city about the possibility of a sewer hookup in 2007 when the septic system on my property broke and was told by the de Department of Utilities that the entry of my driveway is a half a mile or more from the nearest sewer and that the city was not going to extend the sewer any closer. Accordingly, I invested more than $16,000 necessary to construct a new septic system based upon this information. Similarly, at the house on the Fry property in one of the included uh, parcels, it's just to the north of my property, the septic system broke in 2018, the Fry spent $16,000 to construct a new septic system. There are seven properties on the east side of Smith Road to the north of the Fry house adjacent to our properties. None of these seven properties are included in, in the annexation plan. Our properties should be excluded as well. The same county held buffer area between the roadway and the lot lines extends past their road frontage and ours. So our properties do not form a land bridge to any other areas the city wishes to annex. Our properties are on the edge of a huge undevelopable area. The topography is ridges and steep slopes, none of which are buildable per Monroe County slope restrictions. 
There will be no further growth to the east of our property, so no reason for the city to expand in that direction. We have been working with Council Member Sagambaluri and are appreciative that she will be bringing an amendment to reflect the changes we are proposing. We thank you for your consideration of that amendment and for the opportunity to speak today. That's all. Thank you. Well, thank you for your comments. What do we have next, Mr. Lucas? You're, you're muted, Mr. Lucas. Apologies. Okay. Uh, next up is, is Steve Lehman, although I'm not sure there are a couple of Steves on the on the meeting. Um, I don't know if Steve Lehman could uh, raise his hand to let us know uh, that he would like to comment um, while he's working on that. Uh, I believe next up is uh, Jim Shroom. And there is a Jim on the meeting that I'm assuming is Jim Shroom who should be able to unmute. Yes, this is uh, Jim Shrum. Thank you very much. Uh, I was a little bit disappointed. I did take half a day off of work today to come down to the council meeting. Um, I was a little bit surprised it was canceled at the very last minute. So a very, little bit disappointed with that. Um, would like to thank, uh, thank Steve Volan for taking some time to uh, speak with me. Also, the deputy mayor also for taking time to speak. So definitely appreciated their uh, giving ear there. Uh, I do find it a little bit uh, disingenuous, to say the least, when I have a Democrat uh, council that with all the talk of uh, voter suppression and everything going on today, that uh, if this actually goes through and you approve, approve this for, uh, approve the uh, annexation uh, request here, that allowing it the where we cannot vote on that, that is probably the ultimate form of voter suppression when I do not have the ability to vote, and you can argue it's state law or whatever, but you have the ability to keep this from going through and keep me from, and therefore, since I can't vote, you are my vote at that point. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much for your comments. We have next, Mr. Lucas. Next up now is Steve Lehman, who should be able to unmute. Thank you. Can you hear me all right? I uh, sure can. Go ahead, sir. You have five minutes or three minutes. Sorry. Okay. Uh, my name is Steve Lehman, and I live within the Bloomington city limits, so I'm not as directly affected by this annexation. Um, but I do know a number of people that live in the county, and I wanted to uh, share my thoughts on this. In general, I don't think that there's anything wrong with annexation, and I know it's been close to 20 years since we've annexed in Monroe County. But I will say that this particular uh, plan here is way, way too much. It's too fast and it comes at a really bad time for people. Um, I would say shut it down now, come up with a plan that is fair and equitable. Uh, with the issues that we've had with the pandemic in the last two years, I think that that would be a good guideline um, for the time to push it back and just say, hey, we're going to take it back up in two years and we're going to work on a good plan for the folks in the county. They're going to be annexed. And I think that, um, that the city could definitely reduce the number of people that are upset about this. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments, Mr. Lehman. Mr. Lucas. Next up is Penny Giffins. Hi. Hi, Ms. Giffins, I'm, how are you? You have five minutes. I'm, I'm fine, thank you, Mr. Sims. Um, I'm here today as a resident of the city of Bloomington also, and I have multiple concerns about the proposed annexation, one of which is that it's not a voluntary annexation. When I spoke with Mayor Hamilton about what he had proposed, I told him that as a resident of Bloomington, I feared that annexation would increase my property taxes. He assured me that my property taxes would not go up. What I should have asked him, and I'm here to raise this before the city council, is can you assure me that annexation will not cause my local income taxes to go up? Now, some of you may be wondering why I would raise the issue of increased taxes for a Bloomington resident, and here's why. First is the actual cost of going through this annexation process. In 2017, the first time this administration attempted to annex a large number of properties, 
the city spent over $770,000. The Reedy Financial Group, which did the fiscal impact analysis that year, charged almost $400,000, and the mailing costs alone exceeded $120,000. Um, I would like to know what the taxpayers of Bloomington are paying for the current financial analysis and the initial uh, mailing is required under a law. I raise this because I do not think that the most recent assessed values were used and a simple lawsuit may overturn what's going on. So um, you may be back at the starting, you know, back at redoing this. Another cost to me is a taxpayer city of Bloomington. Um, second, it's not just the outdated assessed values that shouldn't be in use. But in using information dating back to 2019, there are new property owners who will not have received the proper notification as required by law. So I will ask you as city council members, how many of the certified letters mailed out by the city have been returned because properties have changed ownership? Third, in looking to benefits uh, to residents of the proposed annexation areas, the city is to provide a long list of services, including police and transit. The Blooming Police Department is currently understaffed with estimates ranging from 20 to 40 officers needed. The police union has said that if all the areas are annexed, they recommend hiring an additional 40 officers. The BPD's budget needs to be increased today, meaning more taxes on current residents, just to be able to attract additional officers. Same is true for Bloomington Transit, which has announced that it will be reducing certain routes because it does not have enough drivers. So also, will my taxes go up? so that BT can pay its essential workers. So I leave you with even more questions. How do you justify increased density while adding to the sprawl? The city will need to bond for approximately $24 million to pay for some of the costs of annexation. Will my taxes increase to pay for this bond? How will the city cover the cost of county TIF areas without raising taxes? How will you add the needed, indeed promised, police officers and transit drivers if annexation occurs? What happens? Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you for your comments. What do, what do we have next, Mr. Lucas? I believe that concludes the uh, list of folks that signed up in person. I'm just going to go through the uh, the few names that I didn't see on the meeting in case they are and, and would like to uh, let me know. That was Joseph Grott, uh, Ken Day, Marsha Johnson, uh, David Garrett and James McKinney. So if we have missed you, please send me a chat uh, or just raise your hand and we will get to you. Uh, so we will now move to the folks with their hands raised in Zoom. Again, if uh, I'll just repeat one more time, if you'd like to comment and your hand's not already raised, uh, you can do so by uh, clicking raise hand. Uh, that may require you to click on the participants button in your control bar and, and then select raise hand. You may also, if you're on a mobile device, need to click the more button with the three dots. And that will then uh, hopefully display the raise hand option. If you're calling in by telephone, uh, you will uh, be able to dial star nine and that will raise, uh, raise your hand. And again, if all of that fails, uh, please just type into a chat and let me know that you'd like to comment and I will uh, put you down on the list. So the uh, next five folks up will be Charlotte Zitlow, uh, Ed, Brett Bowles, Shelley Kilgus, and uh, writer Timberlake. And Charlotte Zitlow is up first and should be able to unmute. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Ms. Zitlow. Oh, okay. How are you? You have okay. three minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much for holding this belated and kind of messy hearing. I mean, you're holding it very nicely. And I appreciate, I really feel badly for you. You you guys are in a terrible position. You have to act on something. You're, what you're doing is you're, you're acting on, on doing something to the you know, city, citizens of the county without their acquiescence. And that's a hard, that's a shameful thing to do. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair. I, I, but I know I have been in your position. 50 years ago, I was on the city council and we did over 200 annexations in um, about five, five, four years. And we started out and it, that included these, the um, industries on the west side. <clears throat> but we, we, we did not only, I, do, I, do, I have not yet to hear a compelling reason for why you're 
why this annexation is going forward. I haven't heard anything that, that made a, has made a good case. And, but, but I assume that we, we annexed very much for the same reasons in 1971 and 75. However, however, one of the, our main, main hopes out of all that annexation was that we would end up with a community that was united, that, that, that did not pit county residents against city residents. And what worries me most about this annexation process is that we are creating real, really bad, really bad uh, relations with our, with our county residents and within the city. Many people are opposed to this. I live in the city. I didn't start saying that. I am a city resident and I am opposing this because I just don't think it's fair. And I don't think it's been proven that it's necessary. I, I urge you to reconsider the whole darn thing. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Siegel. Appreciate your comments. Thank you. What do we have next, Mr. Lucas? Next up, I believe, is Ed, who should be able to unmute. Okay, am I here? Yes, sir. Can you please identify yourself? And then yeah, you I'm, uh, my name is Ed Cook, and I, I live in Stone Lake Park. <clears throat> Most of my neighbors have already uh, addressed our concerns. The thing that I want to uh, kind of express more is the, the, the services that the city is promising, as they say, we already have, and that's included in our HOA fee. When you look at our tax, and I took my home, for example, of an increase of $800, and then the uh, trash removal is no cost, but you pay for the container. When you add that on to our taxes, now it's all of a sudden 939. So in looking at my taxes, that's a 55% increase. Again, I'm sure we told you this, uh, this is basically the majority of the owners here are senior citizens. Let me tell you about a senior citizen until you get there. When you come to a certain age and you know you're close to retirement, you start to think about retirement more. You look at what's gonna fit in your budget, what's gonna be uh, a good place to live, a safe place. We have that. But when once you set a budget, when you've retired, you only have so much income, for example, a yearly increase in Social Security is $360, $360. But now all of a sudden we're gonna pay out another 900 and some dollars with the trash. I think you're not looking at it right. I mean, I, I know you've looked at it, but there has to be some compassion for senior citizens. They can't go out and get another raise. They can't get a 401k. They can't get a bonus. We're on a fixed budget and that, that line there gets awful old, I understand it. But you know what? I'm 78 years old. It is a truism. It is hard on a senior. Right now we are into the panic mode. We don't even know what to do. Can we afford it? You think that sounds like, a? is that gonna break you $900? Everything is going up. It's getting where it's, becoming worrisome to our neighbors is becoming worrisome to me. You plan your whole life how to make this thing work. And then all of a sudden you get hit with this. I'm asking that the Stone Lake Park be dropped from the annexation. Uh, really, I've said everything I can say, and I appreciate you for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Cook. We appreciate your comments. What do we have next, Mr. Lucas? Good. Yeah. Uh, next up is uh, David Garrett. And you said I would have three minutes. Should be able to unmute. I don't want to all that. Out of Hello, I am David Garrett. I own property both within the current city limits and in the proposed annex area 1A. The property I own in Bloomington is my home on the south side of town. I used to live in the home that I own in uh, proposed annex annexation area 1A. 
that I now use for storage. Um, I'm 62 years old. I was born here in Bloomington and I have seen nothing but urban sprawl for the last 62 years. I was appalled to read in the Herald Times that a commenter said tax increases as a result of annexation are so the city can build another park and that it garnered laughter from the crowd at the county fairgrounds. This is not a joke and there's nothing funny about it. These extra tax dollars are needed to provide essential city services to these areas, such as city sewer service. There's no doubt in my mind that the majority of the people opposed to annexation are business owners and affiliates who would be forced to pay closer to their fair share of taxes, such as Cook Corporation. I agree with Senator Mark Stoops when he said that political corruption here in the state of Indiana is every bit as bad as a political corruption corruption in any third world country after Mayor Hamilton's previous annexation attempt failed due to the influence of an upper echelon member of Cook Corporation persuading our state legislators to defeat it, which there is no doubt in my mind was accomplished with dirty money under the table. Thank you for the time for your time. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Thank you for your comments. Mr. Lucas. Next up is Brett Bowles. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you fine. You have three minutes, okay. please. So um, I, uh, I live in area 1A. Uh, I live in the Stone Chase neighborhood on the western edge of Bloomington. I've lived here since 2011, continuously in the same home with my wife and two children. I moved here to take a job at IU, which I still hold today. So I'd like to speak out strongly against annexation. I'd like to address both the substance and the procedures surrounding the process. So first of all, I just have to say, this meeting could not have been at a more inconvenient time for those of us who have school-aged children. As you may know, this was the first day of the new school year and a three or four o'clock meeting on such a day is really a terrible idea, but I leave that aside for the moment. Um, so I've carefully reviewed all the available literature related to annexation, including the materials that the city of Bloomington provided, as well as the uh, independent audit that was conducted by, by Monroe County. And it's difficult to understand how any rational person who is a homeowner in one of the proposed annexation areas would actually vote in favor of this. What we have is a guarantee of increased property taxes without any guarantee of a proportional extension of city services. That's the bottom line for me. Now, beyond that, it's very clear when you look at the financials that the benefit in, in terms of revenue for the city of Bloomington is essentially a zero sum money grab that will diminish the coffers of other municipalities, particularly Monroe County, to a lesser extent, the various townships that are involved, and for example, the city of Ellettsville. And just to cite some of the numbers that came out of the independent audit, in the first three years, Monroe County would lose somewhere between $2 million and $3 million in revenue. The Monroe County Library would, would lose something like $175,000 annually. And the Monroe Fire District, depending on which audit you believe, will lose somewhere between $200,000 and $500,000. So these are, this zero-sum game is, to my mind, a, a really bad idea. It's an even worse idea when you consider that the city will have to take at least a 20-year bond in order, in order to amortize all of the additional um, uh, expenses that will be incurred by annexation. That doesn't make any sense, and the only way to pull off such a bond, as some of the other residents have already expressed, is to increase taxes on those already living in the city of Bloomington. There's one final point I'd like to make in the 30 seconds I have left, which is that this is the procedure involving annexation is, to my mind, uh, absolutely unacceptable. It is essentially an involuntary annexation by default. And if this annexation is not defeated by the council, I hope that it will be, but if it is not, it is absolutely essential that all of the residents in the affected areas be mailed a ballot so that they can vote. This is particularly important given the ongoing COVID restrictions and shelter in place. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your comments. What do we have next, Mr. Lucas? Next up is Shelly Kilgus. Good afternoon. 
My name is Shelly Kobus, and thank you for listening to my comments today and for the information that I received in the mail and retrieved from your website. I am speaking today as one of the owners of Great Oak Tree LLC. It's a small business, woman-owned, family-owned property in area 1A, and we are adjacent to the Cook property. It is from this small business vantage point that I'm speaking today, not residential. In the fiscal plan, I would like to draw attention to a couple of priorities that seem out of proportion from a business owner's perspective. As written in the fiscal plan, the Parks Department capital expenditures of nearly 14 million outweigh the fire department capital expenditures by a ratio of 10 to one. And even worse, outweigh the police department capital expenditures by 20 to one. I would like for the council to reconsider these lopsided proportions if you are to approve annexation. As businesses are some of the largest taxpayers and what we need are robust nearby fire and police services provided from the city. My second concern is regarding zoning. Our zoning classification in the county is termed light industrial. The city doesn't have a matching classification. As a business owner with vacant property, I am concerned about the obstacles we might may encounter as we pursue future development of our property. What guarantee can the city provide to Great Oak Tree LLC that we will get approval for future light industrial development. And lastly, without Cook being the corner post in area 1A, I question as a business owner whether the city will ignore the needs of business. With that in mind, I pose a question, will the city be offering other in lieu of annexation agreements to businesses that are interested. Since business owners do not get to vote, thank you for your careful consideration of my concerns about capital expenditures for fire and police and over zoning. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, who do we have next, Mr. Lucas? And before you get to that, I'd like to remind the public um, that if you will, please also state the areas and or that you live and or work in, um, in your comments. Um, that'll help us gauge um, the area that you're speaking with. So thank you, uh, Mr. Lucas. Yes, next is Ryder Timberlake. Hello, uh, good afternoon. Thank you for providing this forum. Uh, I'm just gonna go to my notes, I'm nervous and they've disappeared onto the other screen. My name is Ryder Timberlake. I've lived in Bloomington more than 30 years. I've been here most of my life and I currently live in Clear Creek with my wife and three dogs. Under the current ordinances, we are set to be annexed. I have a lot of important things to say about these ordinances. I cannot promise that I will say them well, though I will say them as well as I can. Like Nikki Williamson, who spoke so eloquently on behalf of the Edgewood Homeowners Association, and like Steve Lehman and many others present here today, I do believe in a city's right to responsibly annex territory, but this is the wrong amount and it comes at the wrong moment. Arguably, even the islands are coming at the wrong time, and I'm going to tell you why, to the best of my ability. Penny Githin started to get into this, but we have a not just a police problem, but a first responders problem. Uh, we need another firehouse. This need was identified in 2002. I believe the proposed site may have been Weimer and that. Uh, as far as police officers are concerned, we have 73 police officers at last count that I was familiar with. We need 100. We should have 120. 
We need to solve this police crisis, which has been years in the making before we annex anything. The islands within the donut, they make sense at the appropriate time. The mayor has repeatedly spoken about right-sizing Bloomington. The only right-sized growth for Bloomington is that which is sustainable and safe. Charlotte Zitlow called this annexation that almost no one wants shameful. I agree with that. Jamie Ford had some comments about our mayor I don't necessarily disagree with, but they're in the transcript. Like Bob Rimstead, like Tom McGuy, like Barbara Leininger, like Jamie Ford, like Ed Cook, like countless residents of these proposed annexed areas, we are very happy with our services. We expect to be much more poorly served if the city takes over. Um, furthermore, the police shortage, this amounts to public endangerment, not just of people in the annexed territories, but citizens within the city as well, as an overtaxed police force that cannot recruit and retain effectively becomes overburdened by being spread too thin. I also want to speak briefly to Jamie McAllister's uh, point for the people who will be pushed even further out of the city by uh, increased taxes, increased service costs. Where would you like them to live now? Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Timberlake. Um, who do we have next, Mr. Lucas? Um, and again, I will ad advise our public that you can indicate your need or desire to speak publicly in this meeting by using the raised hand function um, in Zoom. And you may have to go to the participants button on the uh, Zoom bar um, and use the raised hand function. Um, you can send our meeting host a meeting through chat. Um, if you use uh, another mobile device, you can use the more button and that will allow you to raise your hand as well, I believe. And on a mobile phone, you can press star nine to indicate your um, desire to speak. Okay, Mr. Lucas, who do we have next? Yes, I believe the next five folks uh, will be Susan Brackney, uh, someone with a, a phone number for a screen name, that's 320-0030. Uh, Theron Thomas, Theron Thomas, I apologize if I mis mispronounce anyone's name. Uh, we also have uh, Rita Barrow and uh, Brett Bowles. And first up is Susan Brackney, who should be able to unmute now. Can you hear me okay? We sure can. Thank you. You have five or three minutes. Okay. I'm speaking today on behalf of the lion's share of homeowners in zone four. I've been knocking on doors there for a month and I want to tell you 71% of the homeowners in zone four have signed petitions indicating that they intend to remonstrate if this ordinance passes. We respectfully request that you vote no on our annexation. We may be surrounded and it may look like a no brainer on a map, but our area is surprisingly rural with many acres of cow pasture and flocks of guinea fowl and chickens and roosters and a pig. It sits on very unique environmentally sensitive karst. We have many mature trees and large amounts of green space. We're good stewards of the land and if left as is within the county, can continue to help reduce the city's carbon footprint and slow stormwater runoff so you don't have all the flooding on Kirkwood and filter and clean the water going to the watershed. We're doing quiet work over here as is in the county. Zone four also includes many fixed and low income people, elderly, disabled, veterans. I've seen them, I've talked to them. And frankly, I'm terrified that they're gonna be priced out of their homes. Yes, there are circuit breakers um, in place, but I looked into this and home value assessments have skyrocketed. In some cases, now they'll do so to such a degree that the circuit breaker caps are met and then the circuit breakers go away. Um, this is not in the best interest of these residents. 
Uh, we were very pleased recently to have council members Volan and Piedmont Smith visit us in zone four recently. And we would like to extend the same invitation to the remaining council members. We really hope you will visit our area ahead of your vote. Um, it's, it's a unique place and I can't even begin to go into everything. You just kind of have to see it to understand. And I hope you'll meet some of our neighbors too. I appreciate the situation you're in and I appreciate the time to share these thoughts today. Thanks very much for your consideration. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us this evening. Uh, Mr. Lucas, who we have next. Uh, yes, first, I apologize. I made a mistake. I believe uh, Mr. Bowles had already spoken. So uh, yes. Christina Swanson will be the uh, the fifth name on that list. So uh, we'll next move to uh, the individual with the phone number for the screen name, 812-320-0030. Uh, uh, they should now be able to unmute. I hope. Hello. Hello, how are you? Uh, I, I'm fine. I, I do not need to speak. I'm on Heritage Woods Road and I accidentally pushed those buttons when I was putting the phone in my pocket to continue listening. So I will not <laughs> need to take any more of your time. Thank you. Well, thank you very, very much. Mr. Lucas. Yes, thank you. Uh, next up is uh, Theron Thomas. Theron Thomas, apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh, you should now be able to unmute. All right, are you able to hear me? Uh, I sure you am. Right? Yes, That's we do. You have three minutes. There. Yeah, it is there. And thank you, Mr. Sims, and to everybody else on the council for allowing us to speak. There's very little that I can echo on this. I do have some concerns. Uh, you know, I've lived in Bloomington all my life. I'm 55 years old, and I, I've seen a lot of uh, good things come out of Bloomington, a lot of poor decisions also. Uh, and that's a, obviously a personal opinion. Uh, but I've had a lot of friends work in the city government and seen how things kind of work. And, you know, on a personal level, it bothers me that we have so much representation on the council who are also under the payroll of Indiana University. Um, that, that bothers me personally, and I, I don't think that it's right. Obviously, those positions are up for grabs, so I'll, I'll uh, move away from that subject. I live in the, uh, according to the paperwork that I got, the Southwest B section. I'm over on Danlin Road, just on the other side of Highway 37 off of TAP, and uh, I've had considerable battles with the county. Uh, I think what I really want to say here is this, is that um, my, my personal issue is I'm a disabled individual and uh, uh, my uh, neighborhood was built without sidewalks. It doesn't meet ADA standards. The county decided to deny taking us into inventory, wouldn't plow our roads or anything until the I-69 project come in and then somehow they magically took us in the inventory. Uh, we still don't have sidewalks. There's a $50,000 bond cash to put those sidewalks in. I uh, can't get anybody to answer where that money went, but I'm certain it didn't go towards sidewalks. And it, it harkens back to the city of Bloomington giving away a million dollars to the individual down in Bedford a few years ago. Uh, luckily, that was caught. You know, I believe that person ended up uh, being criminally charged along with the people that, that used the money. Uh, I suspect uh, because of the connection between Bloomington and Monroe County, that's very similar. So it bothers me that um, people with, with disabilities, uh, appear to be sometimes overlooked, uh, even within Bloomington. And, uh, you know, we got plenty of, uh, a parking or it looks like we have plenty of parking, but even earlier, uh, one of the council members, and I'll, I'll roll back up through my stuff here. <clears throat> uh, I don't recall who it was said, well, you know, people can go to the public library today and, and use it if they don't have connectivity out there, you know, they're, they're going to change this meeting. And, uh, you know, that just, that's, that's a prime example of how people don't understand, the effects of things like this. You know, if you're going to bring us into the city, everybody else has already talked about the increase of taxes. Got it. Don't want to pay extra taxes without representation. That sucks. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, I don't see Bloomington doing much better than the I don't see any benefit of being annexed um, by, you know, uh, the, the city and just being taxed for no reason. More than likely, that money is going to be handed right out to IU to do improvements out there. And I totally get the fact that if IU weren't here, we wouldn't exist very much. You know, it's, it's a big part of Bloomington. 
but I don't see the representation equaling what we're being taxed or the, the, the proposed taxes. And I appreciate your time, Mr. Sims and the board. Thank you for allowing me to speak and get that off my chest. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Thomas. Uh, Mr. Lucas. Next up is Rita Barrow. Okay, I want to make sure you can hear me. I hear you fine. Good evening, Ms. Barrow. You have three minutes. Thank you. Okay, City Council members, I am seriously asking you to consider the following points to ponder. For instance, individuals will not be able to vote in the election 2023 because of the timeline. It is obvious this date was determined knowing this would be an effect on the mayor as well as the city council. Since mayor decided to use the 2017 annex proposal, he should have had more than ready, been more than ready to proceed with the, the annexation in 2023 so people could vote. Also, using the 2019 assess value does not project 2020, let alone 2024. We consider this, and we, I'm speaking of Van Buren, consider this as taxation without representation. Going through the file given by the city, a considerable number of individuals have sold or are deceased. And because the 2017 files were used to send to homeowners for notification, we would like to see those envelopes that were returned and proof of certification of corrected homeowners. Homeowners, as an example, some homes could possibly be over 200,000 assessed value by 2024. You have young families on, kin on incomes barely able to purchase a home let alone anticipate this increase. Individuals who are disabled or widowed now living on one income. Proposed, income, proposed increase is 12.5%. Their social security or disability does not increase 12.5%. You are pushing these individuals either to sell or move out or possibly go into assisted living or nursing homes. In the meeting with three other trustees, I asked why some of the homes were being omitted from annexation in some of the areas. I was told directly by the mayor he would be he would allow them to be annexed if they chose to be. My reply was good because some of them would love to have city sewers. The mayor's reply was, I do not have to commit to city sewers, street lights, or sidewalks. So exactly what are these residents receiving from the tax increase? Trash pickup, you are now going to force the potential annexed residents to receive city trash pickup, which will add to their water bill, not including the additional tax, but in a increase in their monthly water bill, forcing small business owners to close. These businesses, will either be closing their business I'm sorry, Ms. Barrow, your time is up. Um, it, could you speak on which area, if any, that you were commenting on, or is it multiple areas? It is all the area of Van Buren, which is 1A, okay. 1B, and 1C. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your comments. Who do we have next, Mr. Lucas? Next up is Christina Swanson. Can you, Are you hear there? me now? Yes, we can. Thank you. You have, three, you have three minutes. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to um, say that my husband and I um, three rentals, two of which um, are in the Van Buren, I think it's the 1B area. And we try to be responsive uh, landlords, keeping our properties well maintained and with reasonable rent. And so with the increase in taxes, uh, we don't make enough off of these to just absorb that. So it would um, translate into probably increased rents. And I just have never had a renter 
say to me, oh, I just wish I lived in the city. Um, the people that were renting were very happy with the area and the services that were there. So that was the point that I was making and that's it, thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Mr. Lucas. Yes, our next five uh, folks up will be Mark Fig, uh, Marlise, Marlis, uh, Dan Dodge, Sharon Kay, and Stephanie Jones. And first up from that group is Mark Fig, who should be able to unmute now. Thank you, are you hearing me okay? I sure am, Mr. Fig, how are you? Great, Council President Sims, nice to hear from you. Good. Thanks you for being here today. Um, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Mark Fig. I live in Area 2 for about five years, Gentry East neighborhood. Uh, my taxes will you know, be going up with this annexation. Um, I've lived in the city for many years as well, pr at, you know, prior to this, and owned city businesses and property as well. I'm in favor of annexation, primarily to fix the housing crisis, which is caused by what I consider to be a lack of a cohesive development ordinance in the county and a lack of political reality about the housing supply and demand, which are out of balance severely. I think there's a much bigger picture here. Um, although taxes will increase for many of us, um, I think our housing cost has increased so much more, which is really makes it even worse. I think our taxes going up will be better than having to bear continued increases in property value, which are really rampantly out of control. Uh, the new UDO that was finished by the Common Council last year is really the best way to fix this supply problem. I'd like to see it be applied in the county as much as possible. The county commissioners and their anti-development voting and anti-development appointed plan commission president have failed to recognize the problem or do anything about it. Uh, the county development ordinance is ancient and no, no new one is in sight. And we just uh, keep kicking the can down the road, which is not solving anything. The city UDO will make more business space available as well, which is also desperately needed. We can sustain the higher taxes, but I don't believe we can sustain drastically increased housing prices that seem to never be stopping. Uh, it's unfortunate that this 17 year dearth of annexation is gonna have to happen all at once. But on the bright side, you know, we enjoyed 17 years of lower taxes in these areas that would have been annexed if it wasn't for our mayor, Mark Cruzan, you know, having an anti-annexation mentality. Uh, also, the city controls the infrastructure in terms of sewer, which allows for densification. The county has none. So I would like to see that the city services be able to put into areas where we can have more housing. So my kids and grandkids and maybe I'll have great grandkids someday um, can have a home here without it being millions of dollars at that point. So I'm in favor of annexation, and although it's gonna cost me money in my own neighborhood, I'd like for you to go faster, not slower. I think the quicker, the better, and I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Fig. Um, who do we have next, Mr. Lucas? Next up is Marlise. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we hear you fine. You have three minutes. Go ahead, please. Okay. My name is Marlis Kilgus. I'm retired, and I currently reside in Seymour, which is in Jackson County. But in 2005, I invested in Monroe County by purchasing a 38-acre property in an industrial park that bordered Cook Medical slash Cook Group. This is located in annexation area 1A and lies between the two Cook Company properties, which I understand are not included in this annexation plan. The name of my investment is Great Oak Tree LLC. I chose to locate in Monroe County and not the city to construct a custom built life sciences building which has been leased to a pharmaceutical company since 2005. My family and I continue to own and operate our family-owned, woman-owned business. 
Currently, our property taxes are about $75,000 per year. An annexation would add over $46,000, spiking to $121,000 a year. But with growth projections, that amount will likely escalate more. Given the substantial increase that the city layer of property taxes would add on our business, it appears the city isn't interested in retaining or attracting small family owned businesses. Fire protection services are also a concern. If annexation occurs, Richland Township will be covered by the Bloomington Fire Department. The fiscal plan's capital expenditures for the fire department leaves me doubtful that our business will have equivalent fire services as we do now. Also, I've witnessed the traffic problems in Bloomington and worry about slow response time if fire engines are coming from the east. Our business has been pleased with the county services over the years. So Great Oak Tree doesn't believe it will receive $46,000 worth of additional improved services if annexed by the city. I think the annexation plan is massive and uh, needs to be looked into in more uh, definite manner. And I do thank you for your listening to my concerns as a small business owner. Thank you very much, Ms. Kilgus. Um, I will remind folks in the public again, if your desire is to publicly speak um, in this meeting, you can use the raise hand function. Um, you may have to go to the participants button in the Zoom bar um, and use that raise hand function. You may also send a note to our meeting host through the chat function on the Zoom bar. If you're on a mobile device, you may have to use the more button in order to um, access the raise hand function. And if you're on a mobile phone, um, wish to join the meeting that way, then you must press star nine um, in order to indicate a raised hand and your desire to speak. Um, Mr. Lucas, who do we have next? Next up, I believe is Dan Dodge. Uh, I see that his hand was lowered, but I'm assuming he would still like to comment and should be able to unmute now. Are you with us, Mr. Dodge? Okay, um, Stephen, I'd say we can move on. Um, keep an eye out if he logs back on and we can. We can circle back. Uh, next yes. up is Sharon, Sharon K. Hello. Hello, how are you? Okay, um, my name is Carol. I'm just using Sharon's computer, but uh, we're seniors and we live on the south side of town. Uh, according to your map, it looks like area two and we are totally opposed to this annexation. Uh, we're seniors on fixed incomes and I know I don't want to sound redundant from what other people said, but it also would raise our property taxes and probably triple them and sewage costs. I didn't realize that they could charge up to $20,000 if we had a hookup to sewers, because right now we're all on septic systems here. And garbage, we're happy with our providers that we have. By putting in the city garbage, it would put the small guys out of business again, which will hurt more of the financial things. And fiber optics, we have them already, so that would not be an access to us. And we are very happy already with our fire police and ambulance services. And that's basically all I have to say. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you for your time as well. I appreciate your comments. Mr. Could President. We, yes, Mr. Bowler. Could we have her state her full name if she's still on the call? Hello? Very good. Sharon, if you don't mind, what is your last name? It was Carol. Oh, this was Carol Benedict. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Last name is Benedict. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who do we have next, Mr. Lucas? Next up is Stephanie Jones. Hi, I'm Stephanie Jones. 
I live in area two and like a lot of the other residents that have spoke for area two, um, we won't see many of the city services and amenities that have been talked about um, when we're annexed in. I don't believe any new sidewalks are being planned for us. Um, where we live off of Snotty Road, there isn't any way to add any parks in any of these areas. Um, many of us are on sewer um, and don't have the option to hook up to the, or I'm sorry, we're on septic and don't have the option to hook up to the city sewer. Um, and we already get our water from the East Monroe Water Company. Um, so we're already paying for that through our co-op and receiving that. So we wouldn't be getting a lot of these amenities. Um, and by increasing our taxes for the city, it would decrease, decrease to the county as discussed. Um, and so we would actually be losing some services with our schools and health department where they would be seeing less of the revenue that they're currently receiving from us. And so for those increased taxes, for those of us in area two, it actually feels like there is going to be a decrease in what we would be seeing um, since we aren't going to be receiving a lot of these city amenities. And so we're asking for you to please take this into consideration and potentially remove area two from the annexation as many of us will not see any benefit from having the annexation done. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Lucas. Yes, our next five uh, folks up will be Christopher Lanvey, uh, Paul Post, uh, Mark and Diane Riggins, and Julie Thomas, and then I believe Elisa Kilgis. And first up from that group is Christopher Lanvey. Hello. Can you hear me? I sure can. Um, can you pronounce? I'm sorry, I can't see your last name. Can you pronounce your full name? Yes, it's uh, Christopher Lanvey. Lanvey, thank you very much. You have three minutes. All right, I just want to thank you all for taking your time to listen to me. Um, I live uh, in 1A off of Spriggs, right next to Stone Chase, and I also work in 1A. I'm 35 years old, and I migrated here from Michigan for a job here in Bloomington. I recently bought a home specifically in Monroe County for various reasons, mainly due to cost and the, the rules and regulations that they provide, the services, and uh, I happen to be very close to my job. I earn only a median in income and I support a family of five all on my own. Any increase to my current expenses may force me to sell my house and provide my family with a decreased living conditions. As I already live check to check in which this pandemic has not really helped us out much either. Everyone in my community is satisfied with our current services provided by Monroe County and all the other third options, the third party options that are available to us. We have septic and we, none of us are looking to hook up for the additional cost for the sewer system. Receiving the services from Bloomington would not provide us or not outweigh what we currently already have. So I highly urge you all to oppose this annexation. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Uh, Mr. Lucas. Next up is Paul Post. Good evening, council members. Good evening. You have about three minutes, Mr. Post. Okay. My name is Paul Post. I am the president of the FOP Lodge 88, representing the collective bargaining unit at the Bloomington Police Department and a resident of Area 4. I'm here to share with you the concern my members have as we've watched this annexation process. As you know, BPD is grossly understaffed compared to similar agencies and national averages. We saw annexation as a stated goal of this administration during the 2018 contract negotiation and expressed our worries then about the city's commitment to hiring and retaining large numbers of police officers needed to cover the proposed annexation areas. During the past three years, we've continued to see our staffing levels drop, <clears throat> all while violent crime calls have risen. For example, since June 1st of this year, we've had 129 weapons in progress calls, including three stabbings in July and six shootings in the past two weeks alone, all of which were handled by shifts that are running at or below minimum safety staffing levels. Under Mayor Hamilton, BPD has hired 65 officers and had 67 leave the agency. That translates to two thirds of our supposed 100 person department having left in just five years. This represents a tremendous loss of training dollars, institutional knowledge and experience that now benefits other law enforcement agencies. 
Most of those losses were officers leaving to take better paying law enforcement jobs in cities where the call volume per officer is lower and the political support is higher. Now with annexation looming again, BPD is at only 92 officers. All three uniform patrol shifts have had to lower their daily minimum staffing levels to accommodate these losses. The current reality for your police officers is one of working at or below minimum staffing, forced mandatory overtime to cover shifts, long hours at non-competitive pay, and infrequent days off with our families. It's no wonder cops don't stay long in Bloomington. Last year's organizational assessment commissioned at your request showed BPD should already be at 121 officers. The city's own comprehensive fiscal plan states that we need to add 25 to 30 more police officers to staff these proposed areas. Adding 25 to the roughly 29 open positions we are currently short means hiring over 50 police officers in about three years, while at the same time not losing a single existing officer, a nearly impossible goal. We understand growth is a necessary effort by the city. What I would ask of you on behalf of your stressed and underpaid police officers is to seriously consider the speed and scope of this growth. On January 1st, 2025, will the city have enough police officers to provide basic police services for the new version of Bloomington? Or will we continue to keep our heads in the sand, telling your officers to continue working with fewer and fewer resources and just hope for the best? I'm sure that all these potential new citizens of the city will expect something for their increased taxes. <laughs> fully staffed and fully funded police department. I'm sorry, Mr. Thank you. Post. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Who do we have next, Mr. Lucas? <clears throat> next up is uh, Mark and Diane Riggins, who should now be able to unmute. Okay, am I unmuted? Yes, you are. We hear you clear. You have about okay. three minutes. Again, this is Mark Riggins. I'm uh, from area two and I live in the Clear Creek area. 67 years old, I'm a lifelong happy resident of Monroe County, and um, I've enjoyed living in here all my life, but uh, I found a home here in Clear Creek. I love the area, I love the neighbors, I just, and I love the flavor of the way it is right now. I'm one of the people that uh, I've been uh, canvassing the area and making sure there are uh, people in our neighborhood and surrounding area are aware of the annexation effort. And of all the people I've talked to, there's one person in our area that's for this. Everybody else is <laughs> hasn't signed the petitions yet, but they've been against it. Um, the, the biggest thing is we are happy with our services that we're getting from the county now. Personally, I recycle, I do my trash with the orange bags, and it works perfectly for me. And, uh, and uh, people in the neighborhood use other services, but uh, I. I like it because I can control it a lot more um, than if I had the big bags. I like to be able to split it out how the county allows for and instead of just throwing them in a big bucket. But anyway, these are the services we don't need. Um, one thing too is adding for the services we don't need and then having to pay more for things that we're not getting just seems contrary to the efforts of the city and the county on trying to find affordable housing. You're increasing the housing costs to people and they put them out of the business. Well, it's gonna make housing more expensive, which seems contrary to all, all the efforts and everything I've seen in the papers. Um, the last thing is to this involuntary um, annexation process. I understand Indiana is one of the four people, four states that allow this, but this seems totally backwards. Um, something this big an impact in affecting people should be a voted on process rather than going through the process of remonstration and everything else and the, and the cumbersomeness of trying to um, go backwards and saying we don't want this. It should be that we want this. And, and as several people alluded to, too, it is creating a lot of perturbed people and uh, it, it, they aren't happy with this. So thank you for allowing me the, the time to talk. Thank you for your comments, um, Mr. Lucas. Next up is Julie Thomas. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Um, yes, we hear you fine. You have about three you. minutes, Ms. Thomas. Thank you so much, Julie Thomas, uh, Monroe County Commissioner. Um, I just wanted to point out a couple things and raise a few questions. Uh, appreciate that you're here today. 
Um, hopefully you've had a chance to review the Baker Tilly uh, report. The report shows some very uh, interesting things, including a $2.7 million annual loss in tax revenue to the county with annexation. In addition, Monroe County Community School Corporation, a $486,000 annual loss. The public library, where people are hopefully zooming in from, a $273,000 annual loss. And the Monroe County Fire Protection District, a $500,000 annual loss. These are just some highlights. Uh, other taxing units will face losses as well, including township government. Um, these, these are all reductions that are higher than the estimates from Reedy, uh, your financial consultants. All county residents, whether they live in the city or in an area targeted for annexation or not, will be impacted by revenue reduction. We've heard discussions of cir circuit breakers. Yes, they protect homeowners, but they do lead to tax revenue reductions across all taxing units. Uh, consider those on a fixed income or in affordable homes. These tax increases will make these residences unaffordable. Uh, We've heard from renters and seniors who are very worried. Uh, the Baker Tilly report, and they created a tax estimator tool based on the current tax year. Uh, both of those items are available at co.monroe.in.us. We encourage all residents to visit that site. Uh, if any of you have questions about the Baker Tilly report, please contact one of your county commissioners. While some service areas for Monroe County will reduce, for example, road service, most services Monroe County provides will not be reduced uh, after annexation. Monroe County funds a number of important services for all county residents, whether they live in a city, a town, or in a rural area. From weights and measures to health, we know how important that is, from the treasurer to the assessor, from the auditor to the criminal justice system, sheriff, jail, community corrections, probation, courts, youth service bureau, prosecutor, public defender. A criminal justice study was just concluded. How will the county pay for the necessary improvements that impact every county resident? Information provided to residents about the Monroe County Fire Protection District is not an accurate number in the report. Uh, these costs will be lower in the future rather than higher. Um, we um, want to mention as well the carve-outs that were mentioned. If it's bad for some folks in an area, then it's bad for everyone in an area. Please consider that. On the last page of the condensed financial statements recently sent to homeowners, there's a claim that Monroe County has access to $60 million in funding. I would really love to know what that refers to because I don't know anything about it. Uh, thank you all so much for your time and help me find Thank you for your comments, Ms. Thomas. Um, do we have more, Mr. Lucas? Yes, next up is Elisa Kilgis. Elisa, you should now be able to unmute. Hello. I'm Elisa Kilgus, a city resident, as well as an owner of a woman-owned small business, Singota Solutions, which is located in Annex Section 1A. So I have a foot in both camps in this matter. From both perspectives, I strongly urge the council to vote against the annexation plan for Section 1A and for the annexation plan in its entirety. From a property tax perspective, the higher city tax rate will hit Singota hard because Singota is a life sciences business and is very capital intensive. Um, we are also bookended between the two Cook properties which are not included in the annexation plan and are therefore likely to be excluded from general planning under annexation. Additionally, there are insufficient resources in the current plans as they've been published for fire and police capital investments, locations of these services, and the staffing required for the growth of 40% in land size and a population addition to the city of about not quite 20,000. As such, safety concerns will increase and that will cause the cost of insurance to go up. Additionally, this is not a not is not a vision-driven annexation because that would cause us to be able to be united and get behind um, a, a plan that was vision-driven. According to a comment that I heard the mayor make, this the giant size of this annexation plan 
and it's to me seemingly rushed deployment is driven by the fact that 17 years have elapsed since the last annexation. But to, to me, elapsed time is not a vision. Tax revenue is not a vision. This appears to be an arranged marriage designed to gather property taxes to fund more parks and recreation, perhaps by spreading police and fire services even more thin than they already are. Um, we have, uh, Singota has been in the county and the county has been very collaborative. As a business, we don't get a vote, but we always get a chance to be considered and be a voice at the very collective table. And that is important. And um, that hasn't happened in the last several years from the city. It happened in prior administrations, but it hasn't happened. So we know very little other than what we've read about the annexation plan. And I thank you for letting me speak at this, at this council meeting. And thank you for your comments. We appreciate them. Um, Mr. Lucas. Yes, next is Mark Furnish. Can you hear me? I sure can, Mr. Furnish. You have three minutes. Yes, um, I uh, live on Weimer Road in area five. And um, I didn't expect to speak today, but no one else in my area has spoken up. So it looks like I'm, that's why I'm here is to give a voice to some of us. Um, I don't know anyone. I've not talked to anyone on our road yet and in this area that's for this annexation. And I am certainly not for it. And um, I would say that uh, while some of us, we do receive some city services, uh, we pay for them. And uh, if, uh, if the, the city believes that they need to raise the prices on that, then so be it, we'll, we'll, we'll pay for it um, as with, uh, because, because these are services we receive. But right now, you know, we're, we are slated, my wife and I, are slated to uh, have a tax increase of $1,300. And, and both the neighbors on each side of me, it's similar. And we don't even begin to see uh, that we are gonna receive any kind of services that are going to, to be worth that, okay? And um, simply put, we don't see what we gain for what we will end up paying. And um, on our street, our um, a range of people, we have it all. We have young people with kids, without kids. We have middle-aged people that um, most of them are, are, are hardly uh, rich. Uh, they small business people. We have retired people. We have it all. And um, all of them, from their perspective, uh, none of them see them gaining anything from this. Uh, for, uh, nothing has been expressed that, that, that makes us see that anything we'll gain from, from annexation. So I will simply say that I'm, I and a few of my other neighbors are, are uh, we're going to do everything we can legally that's given to us to, to fight this and stand against this. And if we lose and we are annexed, um, it is highly likely that there's, that my family and others will, will be moving. Uh, moving away and, and um, likely we'll be moving outside of Monroe County. Uh, that's how we, we see this. So anyway, thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to, uh, to express my views. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments, Mr. Furnish. Um, Mr. Lucas. That is the end of the list that I uh see in Zoom. I don't see any additional hands raised. Um, we might want to uh, invite folks one last time to uh, indicate if they've not already spoken to, uh, to raise their hand. I do want to uh, try one more time. There were, fo uh, I believe, four folks that signed in uh, in person earlier uh, today, and that was Joseph Grott, Ken Day, Marsha Johnson, and James McKinney. If any of you are on the meeting and would like to comment, uh, please let us know either by uh, again, raising your hand uh, or sending a message uh, to the meeting host. And I do see one more hand that went up, uh, Alan Edwards, who should now be able to unmute. Okay, I think, can you hear me? We sure can. Go ahead, sir, you have three minutes. 
Okay, my name is Alan Edwards. I live in uh, Gentry East. As uh, a lot of people have said, um, you know, we have uh, services that we have paid for and, you know, through, uh, and of course we pay higher than if we were in the city. But um, one of the things that I see is that, um, you know, our taxes are going to go up and there's not a lot that we are going to gain. Uh, we are going to be, uh, basically, we don't get fire services, uh, if I understand the annex annexation information correctly, uh, for, I don't know when we would get them for several years. Um, and so, uh, you know, we, we would be paying, um, you know, higher tax and then through, uh, you know, our taxes, it looks like from what I've seen, our taxes are going to be going up quite a bit each year. Uh, so at least that's my understanding of that, those, that paperwork. And, you know, I'm 60 years old. Um, I pretty much am not going to be making millions. I don't think anybody here makes a, a lot of money in this area that I live in. And so, uh, I'm probably like the other people, you know, if we do get annexed, then I will probably be looking at moving out of Monroe County. Uh, I work at the university, but, you know, I guess I can drive. So that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you for listening. You're welcome, Mr. Edwards, and thank you for your comments. Um, okay, Mr. Lucas, uh, see more hands raised. Yes, uh, next up is Jim Shelton. Good evening, Council. Jim Shelton. Uh, I live in the city, but I'm a member of the county's redevelopment commission. And uh, as a former physicist, I'm a numbers guy, and one thing is driving me crazy. I expressed in at your May meeting that uh, the backup for the uh, impact of the uh, annexation on the county's TIF uh, had no uh, the spreadsheet that was supposed to explain it was was not there. Later we found out right there was not one, and the county sent uh, several representatives, uh, some from Reedy, to our uh, June meeting, and they confirmed that yes, indeed, the numbers in the report that were given to you to the council are wrong, and they're not wrong by a little bit. They're wrong by a factor of four, and they provided. Uh, numbers that could be analyzed that show instead of $304,000 a year, it's going to be about $76,000 a year, What's which is great news to the county. But what concerns me is they have yet to update that on their official report that's on the city's website. I, I'm, I wonder, have they even provided that information to you guys on the council? Uh, I just think that if you all are going to be voting on something here in a few weeks, you really ought to have all the right data. And maybe they have provided you that some other mechanism, uh, I don't know. And I guess this is probably a nit and all the other things you have to consider. But again, as a numbers guy, drives me nuts. So just wanted to say that and uh, hope you can reach out and get the correct numbers for yourself. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Shelton, for your comments. Um, who do we have next, Mr. Lucas? Next up is the screen name, uh, JG uh, Donatello. Donatello, and they should now be able to unmute. Hopefully. Hello, are you, are you with us? Yes, can you hear me? I sure can. Can you um, pronounce your full name? Let us know which area you're speaking on. I am Jean Donatello. And I live in Sterling Woods, which is in within the proposed annexation area two. I just have a quick comment. Over a month ago, I eagerly signed a petition against annexation of area two, as did almost all of the home and property owners in Sterling Woods. Today, I am simply using my voice to testify on the record that I am in strong opposition to the proposed annexation. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lucas. 
Yes, next up is Margaret Clements, who should be able to unmute now. Well, thank you for hearing me today. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. My name is Margaret Clements, and I'm here as a private citizen. And although I serve on several boards and commissions, I'm here to speak as an individual. I do not live in any annexation zone. I am here to represent the concerned residents of the county who, um, who have signed petitions in overwhelming numbers against annexation. In every neighborhood that I have visited, the response rate and signature rate has been upwards of 80%. They intend to remonstrate should the city of Bloomington involuntarily annex them. I would like to say that over the last month, I've been out meeting with people across the annexation areas and every single one of them about how the prospect of joining the city of Bloomington would impact their lives. With, uh, when presented with tax bills as low as an additional $30 a year or $23,000 a year or hundreds of thousands a year, the response is the same. Tears come to the eyes of the elderly on fixed incomes. Business owners are uh, taken aback. Many of them also want to move. Uh, they were concerned about mismanagement of the city. We're concerned about the spiraling legal costs of this wide-eyed venture. We're concerned about the low morale of the city workers personnel problems at every single level, and the uh, failure to have a shared vision. The community is crying to not be included in the city. We do not want to be included in the city. After the last annexation attempt, um, the, the, the services that were provided be promised before have not yet been supplied. I recommend that you supply the services promised to the people during your last annexation, rather than come out to annex more. Mr. Underwood, your comptroller has said there's no financial need to annex beyond the, the current zones because there's a quite a healthy surplus. We're continuing to collect signatures on petitions all the way through remonstration. I am available at 1010 South Walnut Street from 3 to 6 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Come visit me, sign a petition against annexation. I received 25 more tonight after you canceled your city meeting. And the city meeting, by the way, at this very moment, says that it is in person and online. Your noticing has not been proper. So thank you very much for hearing me. I recommend with a vision. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Yay. Mr. Lucas. Yay. Yes, next up is Colby Wicker. Hello, um, can you guys hear me? I sure can, I hear you fine. You have 30 seconds, please. I'm sorry, three minutes. Wonderful, wonderful. Sorry My name's that. Colby Wicker and I am speaking on behalf of County Residents Against Annexation. I'm one of the co-founders. Um, and today, I'd like to open my remarks with, with, a, with a simple statement. This annexation hurts real people, and I would like to pose a question to follow that. Who is it helping? Um, I have spoken to many people who will be forced out of their homes, um, and, and I, I don't think that, that, that that should be allowed to stand. People who have lived in their homes and lived in this area for 30 or 40 years are not going to be able to afford their homes anymore. Um, now, some people may say that there's a circuit breaker there that will protect the, those people who are over 65 years of age, but with the rising assessed values, I, I've found that that is um, oftentimes that's going to go away for a lot of people. Many houses in this annex, in all of the annexation areas will be over $200,000 in assessed value. Um, I think that there have been enough people here um, who've spoken to the fact that most people are not going to get an even return for their money. Um, but I, I, I would like to say uh, one thing on, on that point before I move on to uh, my, my plea to the people listening on this call. Um, some people in the city are uh, pretty eager to throw around a, a term like a freeloader um, in, in that there are people 
people out in the county who suck up city resources without paying for them. And I, I think that that's just not true. If people are on city sewer, they are paying for that. Um, if they are, and if they uh, consume many city resources, they end up paying for that in some way or another. Every member of the county is paying city taxes in some way or, or another through their local income tax or through other means. Um, but to get off that in, in my remaining time, I would like to make a plea to all members of, of the county and anybody who is going to be uh, affected by this issue. Um, we need your help to go out and to canvas more and to get more signatures. Um, I, 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 we, of all the neighborhoods that we went, went through, we've gotten in a, a lot of people who have been willing to sign our petition, the vast, vast majority, as Margaret stated, upwards of 80% of, of all the neighborhoods and all the streets that we have, we have visited. Um, and I, I want people to know that this uh, annexation is not a done deal. Um, even if the city council decides not to uh, listen to, to the pleas of the people who will be, uh, be affected here, I want them to know that they will um, uh, have an opportunity to remonstrate um, and to get uh, to 65% of people in each annexation area. And if we get there, uh, then this annexation will be stopped for good. Um, but the only way that we can do that is if we come together. Um, so please send an email to stopbloomingtonannexation at gmail.com if you would like to join this effort. Again, that's stopbloomingtonannexation at gmail.com. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Wicker. Uh, Mr. Lucas? Yes, next up is Susan uh, Welsand. Thank you. My name is Susan Welsand. I live on Weimer Road. I've lived here quite a while when it was very rural and we still have a rural character out here. I'm in section five. Um, if you've been down Weimer Road, you might have seen my sheep, my llama, or chickens. I wanted to voice my opposition to being annexed, and I wanted to content, commend Margaret Clemens for all the work she's been doing. And I just got a low battery notice, so I will conclude my remarks there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Wilson. Appreciate your comments. Uh, Mr. Lucas? Okay, well, thank you. We'll pause just for a second. Um, but what I will remind folks is that um, if, you're, if you care to uh, speak publicly in this meeting, you can use the raised hand function in Zoom by going to the participants tab um, and uh, raising the hand function there. Uh, you can send a notice to our meeting host through the chat function on Zoom. If you have a mobile device, you can use the more button uh, to indicate your desire to speak and it will use the raise hand function, I believe. And you, through a mobile phone, you can use the star nine function. Um, I will also remind other folks this evening that additional written comments um, can be made to the city council's office by emailing council at bloomington.in.gov. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lucas. Yes, uh, next up, I believe, is a screen name Julie's iPad. And they should now be able to unmute. Hi, this is Julie Keppen, and I just like to go on the record uh, as being against the annexation. Um, I'm supporting the residents in Zone 4. I have a couple of rental properties there that have been in my family for decades. Uh, my property taxes will double and um, that will be passed on to renters who um, currently pay um, a pretty reasonable rent um, because my properties are in the county, but um, I don't, the only thing I see as getting getting for my increase in taxes is trash pickup and that's really expensive trash pickup so uh thank thank you for your time um again just going on the record as being against thank you thank you very much uh thank you for your comments uh, mr lucas yes next up is uh june Sile, Sile who should now be able to unmute 
Okay, hello, can you hear me? I hear you fine, thank you. You have about three minutes. Okay, this is June Salai, and I live in um, section 1B parcel for annexation. I live in the Willow Creek um, Homeowners Association. Uh, I don't say that I represent everyone in the Homeowners Association, um, but in discussion with other board members, um, it, I wanted to add something that no one has really spoken to. A lot of people have discussed how they are either for or against um, services that they might receive um, after annexation um, or how unfair it is to be um, taxed without representation. In our homeowners association, um, it's worse. Uh, for a couple of our services that our homeowners pay for on our campus, we will be taxed twice, essentially. Um, our homeowners association rents streetlights uh, from Duke, and then our homeowners association pays the electric bills every month for the streetlights to be on. Uh, if we are annexed, we will continue, as we've been told by the mayor, we would um, they, they are not necessarily responsible for paying for streetlights, which is, you know, one of the things that you just figure is background. <laughs> um, they don't, uh, they don't, they would not be responsible for adding sewer or adding streetlights. So our homeowners would end up having to continue to pay um, a bill, which is about 250 some odd dollars a month for our streets to be lit. And then we would also be taxed by the city, you know, to contribute for um, for the rest of the city to have streetlights, if you will. Um, so, I mean, in some ways, people are are looking at whether they need the services or whether the city would provide services. But this is an issue where the city wouldn't provide services even if we were annexed, and we would end up paying twice through increase in property taxes. There are other things that our homeowners association takes care of that um, for our residents so that we can have um, a nice campus. Um, everybody really likes living in this neighborhood. Um, and so, the, but there are some things that we would end up having to continue to take care of um, while our taxes are increased. Um, I thank everyone for your time and all of this, and I would appreciate it if you would, on my behalf anyway, vote against annexation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Lucas. Next up is Ginger Fouts. Can you hear me now? I sure can, Ms. Fouts. You have about three minutes. Thank you. I just wanted to go on the record this evening to say that um, I live in Woodhaven Estates. We have a beautiful little community here. There are um, lots of senior citizens here beside me. And I know that people have continued to come back to this issue, but there are people who are frightened that they may have to leave their home after they had made a choice to live outside of the city. And after having been here for 20 or 30 years, they're very close to, and some have already paid off their home. And this is where they wanted to be for the remainder of their life. And much of their discretionary funds for some people at least goes to um, medical issues that they have to tend to the out of pocket expenses. Um, so I just hope that you will please take that into consideration as you make your decision. I also wanted to mention one other thing. Um, Woodhaven Estates is a great place. We have um, diversity. We have Black, White, Hispanic, um, Asian, young, old, um, it is just a great place to be. We talk with each other. We walk our pets together. Um, and people stop and, and talk along the way. Or maybe we talk over the back fence. But um, it, we just don't want to see this 
community take a, a wrong direction. I thank you for the time that um, you've given people so that they could speak this evening. I was very disappointed to hear about the, the cancellation of the meeting um, uh, in person. And I wish that we could have done that. Um, but anyway, I, I do appreciate having an opportunity to let you know about Woodhaven Estates. I think we're in 1B and um, the vast majority of people here um, are not for this annexation. I have gone to several houses and talked with people personally, and they are simply not for it. But thank you for letting me say that. Thank you very much for your comments. Uh, Mr. Lucas? Yes, next up is uh, the participant uh, with the screen name uh, Galaxy Tab S7. And let me see if I can Let's see. I'm not sure if I'm able to unmute them. Let me work on that and we'll go to Dan Dodge. And Mr. Dodge should now be able to unmute. Are you with us, Mr. Dodge? Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Hang on, where was it? Oh, it's not, it's not sound up. Hang on, it's off. You caught me off guard. That's okay, it wasn't our intent. Um, saw your raised hand function. Can so, you hear us? I can now, yes. Okay, so, can you identify yourself fully and yeah, let us know I, which Dodge. area you're talking about if you care to? Thank you. Dan Dodge, area two. And, and, and I have a comment and probably a challenge of the city. And this has a basis of what's been going on for the last 10 years. We, we have had a drainage issue in the south and in, in our count, in our, in our Perry, the south part of Perry Township that has to do with drainage. So back on June 19th, we flooded to the point that we had four feet of water in our shop, in our office, and most of our business has been here for nearly 40 years. Prior to us, this property had never flooded. And so my challenge to the city would be is I will accept your annexation but you've got to correct your water retention issue. Otherwise, I have no use for you. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your comment, uh, Mr. Lucas. There is, uh, apologies, there is one hand raised. Um, I'm still trying to sort out uh, whether they can uh, connect to audio uh, maybe now we could, uh, th there have been several new folks that have joined the meeting. Um, while we're sorting that out, uh, I see another hand raised. Uh, for any folks that have just joined the meeting, uh, if you'd like to comment, you can uh, indicate your uh, desire to do so by raising your hand in Zoom. Uh, some folks may need to click on the participants button in your control bar uh, to access the raise hand button. Uh, for folks on a phone or a more, uh, mobile device, uh, that raise hand button may be under the more option uh, with the three dots. Um, and if you've called in uh, via phone, I believe you can dial star nine to, uh, to raise your hand. Uh, I also had a message from someone that said their, their raise hand button was under the reactions button. So if all of that fails uh, and you would like to comment and can send a message to the meeting host via chat, we will uh, acknowledge you that way. And I do see uh, Deborah Reed and uh, should be able to unmute now. Hello. Hello, how are you? Thank you for tonight. My name You're... is Debbie Reed. Uh, I am representing Reed Quarries, Limestone Quarries, and this is in the proposed a1 annexation area. In 1956, there were 67 limestone quarries and mills in three counties, 
Owen County, Monroe, and Lawrence County. Now, today, we're down to approximately eight quarries and a sprinkling of mills in two counties, that being our dear Monroe County, which I love, and Lawrence County. My friends, everyone listening, we're talking about a national treasure. We're talking about the nation's building stone. We're talking historical, geological features that are found nowhere else in the world. You can find limestone anywhere in the world. Egypt, Canada, Texas, Michigan, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But nothing like what we have here in Monroe County, the Indiana Limestone Belt. This annexation will be game changing for Reed Quarries. We offer educational opportunities, Indiana University, the Monroe County School Corporation and other school corporations come to us frequently and use our site for educational endeavors. This stone, again, is so special. It is the only place in the world that you find the quality and the beauty of limestone, and that's here in the limestone belt. My friends, again, this is game changing. I can tell you this, six generations of reeds and their spouses, so a lot of different names involved, we have been in Monroe County, Steinsville, Ellisville, oh gee, all over Monroe County. And we, we plan on staying here uh, and helping artistically, economically, historically, geo uh, geologically. Uh, please, please understand that this change will be devastating uh, for reed quarries. Please help us. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reed, for your comments. Mr. Lucas. Yes, next up is Jim uh, Eck, EK, who should now be able to unmute. Thank you. You folks can hear me? Yes, sir. We hear you fine. You have about three minutes, please. Thank you. Probably won't be three minutes. I am one of those folks that does not agree with this annexation proposal. And I just wanted to summarize what we've heard here. As far as uh, my personal uh, property taxes, according to the information put out by uh, the city, my taxes will rise 77% with this annexation, but I expect it'll be higher than that. Now, what do I get um, with the annexation? I'll get uh, that I don't already have. I will get uh, garbage collection uh, from the city, although I uh, will have, still have a monthly cost associated with that. The county does a perfectly adequate job in snow plowing um, road maintenance, the uh, police protection is currently county sheriff and it works. We're not quite down to five minutes in my particular area, but uh, it does work quite nicely. Fire protection, it's funny when this when this annexation process was started, we were told to expect them to build a fire station uh, within a half mile of us. And there's no longer that talk. So um, short recap, we get garbage collection and that's it. 
the uh, police department has been represented in the Bloomington Herald Times as being severely um, undernourished as far as actual population of police officers. It has a terrible time uh, trying to recruit police officers. So we're just not getting anything. Now, I don't have enough time to go into my example. Oh, but you, uh, have, you have 30 seconds left, Mr. Hank. I'm sorry. Yeah, but believe me, I never said anything in 30 seconds of my life. <laughs> okay, well, I yield the rest of my time. Have a great day and please vote against annexation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Atkin. Would you care to share which particular area you were speaking on? Um, I am in 1B. Okay, thank you. Boy. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Lucas? Yes, next up is the uh, screen name S Long 54. can see that they are unmuted, but I'm not sure that we're getting any audio. Let me try that yeah. one more time. <clears throat> If, if they would like to try uh, reconnecting to the meeting, that, that may help solve the issue. Um, I don't think we're hearing their audio, so um, I'll uh, let them try that and uh, move on to the next uh, speaker, uh, Mary. And uh, Mary, if you're able to unmute now. Yes, can you hear me? We sure can, thank you. you have about, okay. 30, about three minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, I am. Um, I'm representing myself and my husband, Bill, and we are in section two on Snotty Road by the Tibetan Cultural Center, which is very rural. And when we moved to Bloomington, this is exactly what we wanted. We wanted a more rural setting around animals. Um, we just love it. Um, June previously had made a point about lights and that is one of a, one of the concerns that we really don't need. I have a heavy uh, tree frog community here and a lot of wildlife and lights would just would just hurt, hurt them. Okay, I mean, it, ju it just does. But anyway, uh, regarding our taxes, our taxes would increase 38.5%, uh, an amount of $1,228. Um, so my husband and I are totally against the annexation. Um, we would like to keep this area rural and very country setting just as it is. And I think that's really about it right now. Hey, thank you. Um, I didn't get your last name, Miss Mary. Uh, Born, B-O-R-N. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you for your comments. Okay, thank you. Mr. Lucas. Yes, I'll uh, try again with uh, S Long 54. See if they're now able to unmute. I don't know what the problem was, but I guess. I'm still not sure what the issue with, uh, yeah. with the speaker is. Um, again, if you could try to log off the meeting and log back, uh, log back in. Sometimes that, that corrects it. Um, uh, I'll go on to Thomas uh, Schwant, Schwant, and they should now be able to unmute. Thank you. Um, my name is Thomas Schwant. I'm uh, in area two in the subdivision called Cedar Springs, which is divided from the city by the highway 446. Um, Thank you, uh, Mr. Sims and Mr. Lucas for managing this process. And my thanks to members of the council for your attention to 
the multiple voices and interests and perspectives and concerns of citizens who are opposed to annexation. I've written to all council members with <clears throat> both my concerns and my wife's concerns about why annexation is a undesirable and not warranted uh, process for us in Cedar Springs. But I just want to add one more thing. Part of what I do for a living is I advise decision makers in government and non-government agencies. And one thing I always emphasize with them is that the decisions that they take must be justified as technically sound, politically feasible, and morally defensible. And I simply would like to encourage all of you on the council to consider all three criteria as you make these decisions about the areas to be annexed. I appreciate your time and attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Schwant. <clears throat> Mr. Lucas. Yes, next up is uh, Lana Kreider. Yeah, I'm sorry. The name on the phone's not right. My name's Stephen Kreider. That's my wife. Uh, I live in Holland Village, in behind Monroe County Bank. We're in one. I'm in one of the islands. I just uh, pretty well opposed all this. Senior citizen can't afford the tax raise. Like where I'm at, have everything I need. Uh, the other thing I'd like to say is I just want to make sure we're in the same area as Fieldstone. I think in this group, and I want people in Fieldstone to understand that a lot of the waivers you guys had in 2017 in them areas are gone now. So when this gets to the remonstrance phase, which it probably will, I just want to make sure everybody in these new areas back there understand it didn't went away. A lot of the, hey, we've already got your vote in the pockets gone. So that's about all I had to say about it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your, your comments. Uh, Mr. Lucas, did we get S. Long back? 54. I don't see them in the meeting anymore. And at the moment, I don't see any additional requests for comment. Okay. Uh, um, a... Well, it's a good, uh, good time to give folks a chance to still log on if they want. Uh, we will ask that if you care to speak, you can still use the raise hand function in Zoom. Um, and you could reach that through the participants button as needed um, on the Zoom uh, bar. You can also send a message through via chat to our meeting host to indicate your desire to speak. Um, if you're on a mobile device, you can use the more button and use it to raise the hand function. I believe that's with the three dots. Um, and if you're on a mobile phone, star nine um, is the way to access that way. Um, I will also remind the public that um, you can also send the city council written comments through our um, email, and that's council at bloomington.in.gov. That's council at bloomington.in.gov. Mr. Lucas. I don't see any, uh, any more takers for comment at the moment. Okay, thank you very much. Um, then that means we will move on in the agenda to matters having to deal with council schedule, um, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Mr. Lucas, what do we have on tap? Well, uh, this, uh, this evening was again the public hearing uh, required by statute on the annexation proposals. Uh, the next step in this process uh, will be uh, a vote on the ordinances, um, or at least the next uh, step in the statutory process uh, allows for you all to vote uh, not earlier than 30 days and not later than 60 days after the conclusion of the public hearing. Uh, one of the things that you all may want to think through, and, and today may be the day to, to think through this, or, or you may want additional information um, at uh, this Friday's work session, um, I know that uh, some members have expressed interest in uh, amendments or changes to the, uh, to the proposals and to the maps, and you all may want to think about how and when you uh, take up those changes. Um, I think under, under the statute, uh, you all 
uh, could technically change the ordinances up until the vote, although uh, I think due to the complexity of some of the proposals, uh, the logistics of, of uh, reflecting any changes in the, uh, the maps and the legal descriptions and the fiscal plans might uh, require that uh, you all think through changes ahead of them. Uh, so uh, again, if you're ready to talk about that tonight, I think you can. Um, if you would like to uh, hear more about that uh, this Friday at the work session, I think that's also a possibility. Um, but I wanted to, to raise that issue uh, with you as well. And uh, I will remind folks there is a work session this Friday to hear about uh, legislation coming to you all um, in the next legislative cycle that starts on August 18th. Uh, those items would include uh, an amendment to the PUD along Curry Pike, uh, one historic designation proposal, and a bond ordinance uh, related to the uh, Crestmont housing project that you all gave uh, preliminary approval for uh, earlier this year via resolution. Um, I'm happy to talk through any of those issues or, or answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lucas. And the first thing that I would say, um, with at the work session, if we work through the amendment process, and of course, that'll have an opportunity for um, council staff, as well as um, administrative input. Um, but if in fact we get to that's what's decided to do, and some of our my council colleagues aren't present on Friday, um, we will obviously make arrangements to get any of those uh, discussions to those members that weren't present. Is that correct? at least enough so that we could work out the process for this amendment process uh, moving yes. forward. Yes, okay. I think that's correct. And, and I, I will encourage members who uh, have changes in mind to any of the proposals to uh, reach out uh, earlier rather than later, even if you're not sure whether you'd like to move forward with the proposal uh, so that uh, both council staff and administration staff have time to review it and, uh, and vet it. And uh, again, um, uh, reach out. I, if uh, the president uh, doesn't mind, I, I do now see that uh, S Long 54 has rejoined the meeting and maybe we could attempt one, uh, one time to uh, unmute if that's all right. Yes, please. Okay, let's try again. Okay, can you hear me now? I sure can, thank you. You have Wonderful. three minutes. Can you yes. identify yourself, give us your full name? Sure can. It's Sarah Long, and I'm in the Highland Village Area 1 area. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I'm a firm believer of if it's not broke, don't fix it. And I think there's a lot of people that are very content with how things are right now with um, the uh, sheriff's response and the fire department response and everything. My um, That would be one of my main concerns is... Um, police and fire protection, and I think it's excellent right now. Uh, the other concern I have, and my dog has, I think you hear him in the background, um, is I really don't see any benefit for the people who would be annexed. Um, I've checked in my, my taxes would go up between six and seven hundred dollars a year, and frankly, although I'm not retired yet, I'm extremely close, so my income uh, will be limited soon. And it is a concern for me that um, I wouldn't be able to make ends meet. Um, it's hard enough to do it as it is now. So I would just please urge you folks to um, reconsider your um, annexation and um, put it to rest for us. Okay, that's all I've got to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Long, for your comments and thank you for your patience um, as we try to get you um, allowed to speak publicly. Um, I appreciate you, you getting me in. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Lucas, we're still on council schedule. Do we have I, I anything will else also, I will also note next week is scheduled as a committee week. And at the moment, there is no legislation uh, ready for committee discussion next week. Um, 
that was a Wednesday that uh, the council could look at uh, if it w uh, wished to uh, consider amendments that, that may be ready by that time. Um, we had also uh, looked at that date as a, a possible backup date for the continuation of today's public hearing if, if it needed to extend uh, that long. So uh, the council may want to either uh, cancel the meeting for next Wednesday, uh, decide whether it wants to use that as an opportunity to begin discussion on amendments um, if, if it thinks that amendments are, are ready. Okay, I think it's a good idea. I think the first thing that we need to do is uh, can we get an indication of council members who wish to attend the work session Friday? Okay, uh, let me flip through the screens. I think I see three hands. Uh, and there's a fourth. Um, I will be there fifth. So there will be at least six. So uh, Mr. Lucas, we will have the work session on Friday. Okay. Yes, thank you. Um, and this is the discussion, I guess, on uh, possible amendments and how we work that framework. I do believe Mr. Boland's hand was up first and then Council Member Sandberg and then Council Member Rollo. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I think that um... When I've already seen one or two amendments floating around, I think uh, it would be a shrewd use of our time to keep the meeting on the 11th. Uh, I hope I'm speaking for other members when I say that, but um, I also wanted to take this brief opportunity to tell everyone attending that uh, I am ready and eager to meet with anyone who would like to discuss annexation uh, in a conversation, not simply just a uh, um, a public hearing, and I invite uh, any group that would like to meet with me uh, to contact the council office or to email me directly at bolaness at bloomington.in.gov. I'm sure that there are other members who will say the same thing, so I don't want to imply anything other than that, um, you know, that, that I'm willing to do that, but I think others are too. But I just wanted to say that before I got a chance. If you have any interest in meeting with uh, council members, please contact the office with that specific request. And I'm happy to be one who would do that. Thank you for the opportunity, Mr. President. Thank you, council member Sandberg. I too would like to keep that meeting on the schedule, but I have one more concern to voice before we end this evening. You know, this meeting was hard stopped at nine o'clock to allow everyone from the public to come in and speak. And this of course was before we decided to go virtual in the interest of the new uh, Delta variant of COVID. So I do have a concern that there may have been individuals who would have liked to have attended this meeting perhaps in person and who maybe don't have the technology to join by Zoom. And I'm just wondering if there's the will of this council to extend at least one more opportunity if more people don't start joining on tonight to have additional public comment through a Zoom platform where people have a little bit more notice to be able to make arrangements in order to attend that meeting. And I don't know if that could be perhaps maybe the first hour or two of that Wednesday meeting on the 11th before we get to any amendment work, or if you just wanna stick around a little bit longer tonight, just to ensure that we're giving everyone an opportunity who wants to speak. And, and I agree with Council Member Volan, those of us who have already been on tours with people and who have been um, meeting with various groups are more than happy to continue to do that between now and, and the time that we will either make amendments or, or make the final vote. So again, I feel very strongly that this last minute notice of going uh, through Zoom today, although I support it 100%, given my concern about the Delta strain, um, I, I feel the need to be very um, inclusive of our public. Thanks. Thank you. Council Member Rolla. I had the same concern actually that since we changed format and there may have been residents who arrived at the council chambers expecting to speak and then found that it was at a, on a Zoom format or thought that they would have time later in the evening that we should um, uh, you know, seek to accommodate any, anyone who might have been left out. So perhaps that can be done next Wednesday. Uh, we, did, we did leave tomorrow as an option, but I think that next Wednesday might allow 
you know, more adequate notice for people if they haven't had their say to be able to have that opportunity. Here, okay. here. Thank you, Council Member Rallo. Um, and I'm sure we'll discuss that later. Um, my only concern is trying to do both of them in the same evening. And if we could have a set time, I heard a suggestion of an hour or two hours or something like that. But if there's a way that we can maintain it at that time, um, or maybe make arrangements as a body to extend it as needed. But I'm just trying to juggle both those, I think. But I, I agree with what I'm hearing um, with regard to trying to uh, get anyone that we may have missed. So um, Council Member Smith and then Council Member Scambler. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Council Member Smith. Thought I saw your hand. Council Member Scambler. Yes, thank you. Um, and I appreciate Council Members Sandberg and Rolla. Thank you for bringing up this point. Um, today did create a lot of confusion and I don't believe it's anyone's fault. Um, we are in an evolving situation with this pandemic just as we were last spring. Um, and, and so I would rather err in the direction of doing what we can to allow anybody who would like to offer feedback to do that. We have a lot of electronic means to do that. Um, but if that means waiting around here for a little bit longer for people who might have um, might be just coming off a shift and planning to offer comment, then let's do that. Um, or tomorrow night, if we don't want it to bump into the activities we have planned for next Wednesday. Um, but I would echo the thought that we err in the direction of providing every opportunity we can for feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just flipped the screen to Councilmember Piedmont Smith, Rosenbarger, and Flaherty, um, and I see Councilmember Piedmont Smith's hand. Um, I think uh, I, I agree with my colleagues that I'd like to give another opportunity for the public to comment on annexation. Um, and and uh, when we do that uh, is influenced by um, whether we envision next Wednesday evening as the only opportunity to discuss amendments or just the first opportunity to discuss amendments. I would appreciate actually having more time uh, than one week to prepare amendments for discussion. Uh, if there are some ready next week, I'd be happy to take them up, but I hope that we have a, an opportunity later than that as well. No, I think the plan is to begin discussion with Friday's work session. Um, and then the suggestion of the Wednesday from now is just the start. It's not the finale. Um, ultimately, um, at the end of the hearing, um, as Mr. Lucas has said, we can do it no sooner than 30 days after and no longer than 60 days after. Um, so our currently scheduled vote of September 15th, thereabouts, uh, fits squarely within that window at this point. But to answer your question, Councilman P. Musmith, no, that's not, we have discussed that and we think a week is, we need more than that for, for due consideration from our colleagues. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, okay, I don't see any further hands raised. Um, yes, Mr. Lucas. Uh, yes, just to add another wrinkle to all of this, um, I believe the legal department uh, and, and the administration uh, we'll need the council to uh, conclude the public hearing at a, at a defined moment. So uh, if, if that's tonight, um, that will start that 30 to 60 day window. Um, what I think I'm hearing is that you all uh, would like to allow for additional public comment uh, at some point, even if that's not uh, falling under the, uh, the required public hearing. So uh, I think if, if that is what you're intending tonight, we need to make clear that the public hearing has concluded tonight but there will be additional opportunities for public comment um, in the future. Um, thank you for that clarification. Um, one of our contingency plans um, in case this meeting went long was to uh, call us a uh, continuation of the special session for tomorrow evening. Um, and that to me seems to be the better option. Um, in particular, if we were talking about first two hours or so of next Wednesday, it seems to me that having a meeting tomorrow night uh, to continue public comment uh, would be more timely and effective. Um, wonder what say my colleagues. 
Council Member Flaherty. Um, my only concern there, President Sims, would be uh, sort of the the benefit of more time for folks uh, to get the word out through media outlets and otherwise that that um, uh, given the health driven decision to to go virtual and the fact that this meeting uh, may may recess or end prior to 9 p.m. tonight that, that a week's time to really make sure everyone has a chance and get, we get the okay. word out could be good. Um, I, I also I appreciate um, uh, the point that Mr. Lucas brought up about, of course, needing to end the public hearing at some point. Uh, I sort of thought that that if we were to continue to hear public comment, it would make the most sense to recess and reconvene this this um, special session and and continue the public hearing uh, with the the goal of finishing it next Wednesday, um, as opposed to opening a new meeting for public comment. That's uh, just the direction I would lean. But um, again, uh, interested to hear what other members and or our council uh, attorneys think about that. Councilmember Scambolari. Yes, thank you. Um, I appreciate your bringing that up, Councilmember Flaherty. Um, if if we are to receive more public comment, I don't know that there is a, a legal difference in the weight of comments delivered during a public hearing versus those delivered in a regular session or a special session. Um, but but if we are if we are to receive more public comment, it seems that for consistency's sake, it may make sense to just recess this public hearing tonight and resume it when we, cho when we choose to receive more comment. So, thanks. Council Member Volan. Thank you, yes. I mean, my question with respect to recessing, because I had the same thought, is does that change the definition of when the public comment, uh, the, 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 the public meeting ends? Uh, in other words, if we recess to the 11th, does that mean that we have 60 days from the 11th or 60 days from tonight to make the final vote? Mr. Lucas? I believe the, the clock starts to run at the conclusion of the public hearing. And, and you may want to uh, invite uh, either Philip Guthrie or Mike Rooker to chime in. I know we also have outside counsel, but uh, I believe the uh, window for voting is tied to the conclusion of the public hearing, which makes it important to conclude the public hearing at a defined moment. And uh, um, again, I know we've got uh, Corporation Council and uh, other Ms. city Guthrie, attorneys on the call. Yeah, Ms. Yes, Guthrie, what do um, you say? I would advise that you close the public hearing tonight. It doesn't change the fact that you uh, want to have additional public comment and you can do that at, at a regular meeting or another council meeting if you want, but that does dictate the, the 30 to 60 day period and you have already scheduled um, the time that you want to evaluate the ordinances and possibly vote, and that would be September 15th. So unless you want to extend the timeline, but I mean, it, it's out there and it's been advertised. And Well, the, the concern that several of my colleagues have, have said it is about uh, the handling of amendments. Um, while I think that we can, we might be able to take up an amendment or two next week, um, you know, between now and next week is not really much time to create amendments. So right. uh, an extra week in the process might be beneficial. What do you say to that? Uh, well, it's up to you what you want to do with the schedule, but um, staff will need to know about the amendments too, as I think you know, so that we can discuss them and make sure they make sense and they would require changes to the fiscal plans. I don't know that you need an extra week built in. I mean, you kind of, you've got 30 to 60 days, which is yes. significant. Well, what I'm okay, hearing is, no, thank you. And what I'm hearing that it may be that we're talking about two separate things as far as ending this meeting and start the clock rolling and yet still have an opportunity to further discuss um, the amendment process, uh, which I think is kind of baked into what we're talking about tonight. Um, and we'll further, have that discussion on um, work session Friday, um, but it still warrants some further discussion this evening, I think. Um, Council Member Rallo. Thank you, Ms. Guthrie. I concur with uh, Council Member Flaherty and I believe uh, Council Member Volan that we should extend the public hearing uh, to next Wednesday. We shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't close that this evening. That affords us more time 
Um, now, we might conclude on September 15th, but you know we will have uh, a little more time if needed, and we're anticipating amendments um, that could be quite complicated. And so um, I don't see any harm by, ex by recessing the public hearing this evening, continuing next Wednesday, affording us an extra week, which would be, I think, beneficial. Okay, thank you. Um, and we uh, will discuss it and do a, with the will of the council. Um, but I also think, um, as you mentioned, the complexity of some of these amendments, um, and it will fundamentally change some things, and particularly the fiscal impact. Um, so we'll definitely have to in, make sure we involve administrative staff um, as we move forward. I I'd like to think um, Council Member Boland was next, and then Sandberg, and Council Member Smith, if he had something. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Mr. Yeah. President, a question um, about um, the budget process. Um, you know, if September 15th is when we're hearing ordinances, but we still have more time, uh, how much of the time will be consumed by the budget and other business? Uh, that's a, a concern I can imagine us having in a month. Well, that is true. And that's one of the things we've been talking about um, in scheduling with those possibilities. Um, it starts with uh, this meeting tonight and a contingent meeting scheduled, um, for example, for tomorrow and even continuing on into next Wednesday if needed. So I understand what you're saying, but um, with no more at this point, with no more public comment, that kind of defines one of the first concerns we had from uh, a bottleneck in the schedule. So okay, um, I just wanted to know when when is the budget scheduled for? Isn't it scheduled for after September fifteenth? I do believe it's the 29th. Yes, okay. it's after September fifteenth. I'm just um, saying the, that. The issue, with, the, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. With the budget on the 29th, uh, we're going to have. I mean, if you add uh, the, oh, the, budget, the deadline, the, budget, the dead. Sorry. I was going to say the budget vote is then. We still have the hearings prior to that, which will take up the entire week that you're aware of. Right. So yes, again, okay. what I'm saying is, if uh, we decide on September 15th that we need more time to handle annexation, uh, that leaves us the 22nd, maybe. Uh, will be consumed with the budget on the 29th, and there won't be, an, I mean, the deadline will be August, October 4th, so we won't have a meeting after the 29th to handle anything. Do you see what I mean? So it basically leaves us the 22nd if that's not already tied up with other business. So I'm a little concerned about how much time we'll, we'll practically have to handle annexation business after September 15th. Um, yes, and I too share that concern so you can understand the complexity of the discussions from a scheduling standpoint that um, have been happening since January 1st of this year. I do understand um, that. Thank, I, 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 I guess what I, I'm I asking is, shouldn't we, shouldn't, the, isn't that an argument for recessing the meeting tonight so that we give ourselves till October 11th, thus buying one more potential week for dealing with issues? That's my thought. Thank you. Could be. Thank you. Um, I believe Council Member Sandberg or Scambolari was next. I just thank wrote Thank you. Down. I, yes. I, okay. Thank you. I too appreciate the complexity, and I know what a difficult position we have all been put in with all of the. I mean, these are some of the most critically important votes and decisions this body has had to make in my entire tenure on this council, and it's all butting up against each other. Budget annexation and these decisions are huge and i just hope we can take the time we need to do our due diligence to listen to the public to analyze the data and then to allow the public to speak at least one more time given what we had to do tonight and make the time to make these important decisions i don't want to rush anything at this point to the extent that we have the ability to extend this into one more week and maybe the actual vote takes place on the 22nd instead of the 15th i'm i'm willing to do that full well knowing we've got budget coming up too which is another critically important uh, uh task that we do on behalf of the city of bloomington so i i just hope we can give it additional time to this thanks I think you're absolutely correct. And I think that's one of the values of this public um, debate. Um, so we could work out things like that. So thank you very much. Um, Councilmember Smith. 
Thank you, President Sims. Um, I, I'm go certainly going to agree with my colleagues that uh, recessing and uh, reconvening it is a, a much better idea. It's a much more prudent way. We don't want to start the clock um, uh, in a statutory way until we have an idea what else is coming you know, towards us. So um, I really think that in order for us to make good decisions, I, I agree with all my colleagues that uh, reassessing and uh, coming back next week uh, in, in a week so that we give people uh, uh, opportunity to uh, uh, speak their piece since today was just uh, an unusual incident. And uh, I, I just, you know, we had to cancel it and it was a good idea that we canceled it. And so now let's give people the, op the time and the opportunity um, to speak their piece. So um, I'm really for recessing. So uh, thank you. Okay, thank you very, very much. Um, Council Member Piedmont Smith. I move that uh, we recess this meeting and reconvene on Wednesday, August 11th at 6 p.m. for two hours to finish up the annexation hearings. And I will Sorry, okay, I've heard the motion. Did I hear a second? Second. Second. Okay, thank you. I'm probably moving the second. Um, did you have something, uh, Council Member Vola? Yes, I just wanted to ask um, uh, the maker of the motion, what would uh, happen if uh, there are fewer, few takers and we're done well before two hours. Would we immediately continue to the uh, uh, this, the session that's scheduled, or would we uh, schedule a, a specific time two hours later for the business to follow? Well, I I would propose that we uh, have two hours be the maximum. And if we end earlier, then we can move on to our other business earlier. Mr. Lucas, is, does, does she need to change the motion at all to reflect that? Or can we simply have the meeting continue uh, after we're done with the this uh, public hearing? Uh, Councilmember Flaherty may be making the same point I'm, I'm about to make. I, the uh, current committee meeting scheduled for next Wednesday uh, has no has no business uh, right. that would be ready. So I, I think what uh, you all might want to do is, uh, rather than hold a committee meeting next week's, uh, recess the special session, reconvene next Wednesday in lieu of that, that scheduled committee meeting. And- uh, could, Does that mean we could simply, could we also take up amendments after the public comment period is over during that same meeting? I, I think you could, if, if there That's are great. amendments yeah. ready to discuss. That's great, thank you. Council Member Flaherty. Yes, I was uh, thinking some of what Mr. Boland just mentioned, um, which is that we could um, leave the end time open-ended if uh, there was no yes. objection to an amendment to the, to the motion. And in particular, I also think that we need to uh, pick up public comment essentially and input essentially where we left off. Um, so folks who've already spoken would not be allowed to speak a second time, but anyone who, in the possibility that we have more than two hours worth of speakers next Wednesday, I think we absolutely need to hear them all out at that point. So I, I, would, I hesitate to set an end time for that reason. And I think if we just start a set a beginning time and uh, we could update the agenda uh, in order to uh, include possible discussion of amendments if, if time allows. Uh, I, I, sorry. I'll, I'll stop there. Hey, did you have something, Mr. Lucas? Um, if not, Council That's all right. Council Member Piedmont Smith and then Council Member Scambalera. Well, I was just going to volunteer to amend my motion to uh, ha um, have a start time of 6 p.m. on August 11th and no set end time. I think I would okay. need another second. Second that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Council, Council Member Scambalera. And so just to confirm my understanding, we would convene in a special session, continue the public hearing, end the public hearing at some point, and then just continue in the special session. Is that accurate? 
That's a Mr. Lucas or Mr. Flaherty question. Councilmember Flaherty. Um, no, so first of all, just to clarify, we would be reconvening the same special session we're currently in. So we'd simply be in recess and then reconvene. I think what would, at least what I was suggesting is that we would continue uh, any conversation about potential amendments as part of the same special session before uh, adjourning and concluding the special session at some point that evening, whether we've had discussion amendments or not, assuming we've heard from everyone who wants to speak. And that would conclude the public hearing on the August 11th date. Uh, just one final note related, um, September 15th, of course, still falls within the 30 to 60 day window of uh, August 11th. So, so we haven't messed up that date, so to speak, if, if we did want to use it in the future. Okay, thank you. Um, no, that date would still be intact, um, but I think um, the length of time that we may consider amendments with regard to the work that administration would have to do um, after that could have some impact, uh, but certainly feasible. So thank you very much. Um, Council Member Boland. Yes, I would ask uh, Council Member Pibon Smith if she wouldn't object uh, too much to leaving it at our normal start time of 6.30 rather than six o'clock. Councilman uh, Piedmont Smith. Yeah. Um, no, I purposely said six o'clock so that we wouldn't go too late into the evening. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, without any further comments, I think the motion has been properly moved and seconded. Um, and that motion is to Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, um, Mr. Lucas. Yes, sorry. Just just one more note. Uh, uh, hopefully, in order to provide some uh, uh, additional notice, uh, we may want to uh, display the uh, the meeting link uh, for tonight that we could reuse next week for a reconvened uh, meeting. And I'm happy to display that if if this motion passes. Uh, so, just wanted to note that. Okay. Thank you very very much. Um, not seeing any further comment on this motion. Um, will the clerk please call the roll? Is the clerk still with us? There Ma'am, all right. I just I had a question for Mr. Lucas. Would the note about the uh, Zoom link need to be included in the memo? Uh, yes, we. I can. I can talk to you about what would be needed in the memo. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, where are we? That'd be Councilmember Sims. Yes. Flaherty. Yes. Piedmont Smith. Yes. Smith. Yes. Sandberg? Yes. Rallo? Yes. Volan? Abstain. Rosenberger? Yes. And Scambalori? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. That motion passes 801, um, I believe. Um, Councilmember Flaherty, now with regard, we're we looking for a motion just to recess with plans to reconvene or do we just adjourn this evening? That, that was the motion and no need to adjourn. We are, not, we are now recessed. Uh, we will be reconvening. Um, August, um, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, August 11th at 6 p.m. And I believe perhaps the um, uh, Council Attorney Lucas wanted to display the link for the benefit of the public as well. Yes. Okay. And while he's doing that, um, uh, be, and before we adjourn, I would like to um, just let the public know that uh, the decision to uh, move to virtual tonight um, had a lot to do, but mainly with the health and safety um, that we, uh, possibilities of having an in-person meeting um, with, with some of our um, health emergency situations um, that we're dealing with. Um, I know it was not ideal. I know it created some other things and some discussion this evening. Um, but I, as president, um, ultimately makes those decisions. I 
pretty much stand by those. And I think it was evidenced by my colleagues with the vote to do the same. Um, so I do, did not wish to create any extra um, confusion, um, but I think, and again, I think my colleagues agree that that was probably the best move long-term uh, while we're in the middle of a health um, emergency situation. Um, so thank you very much. And without any further ado, um, Mr. Lucas and Mr. Clarity, unless I'm incorrect, this meeting is now adjourned. Not adjourned, just recessed. No, just recessed. <laughs> in Thank fact, you. we've already recessed. We're, we're not okay. technically in a meeting anymore. So we'll see Fan. you all. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, what I just said still, still means, it still matters, right? I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for your input and um, look forward to more fruitful discussions on um, our legislation. Thank you very much and good night.